This is the Copper Crab Podcast. I am Cheney Crab. I am Naveen Copperwise. If you would like to grab podcast merch, then you can hit up www.bigcartel. Naveen told me I don't have to say www you know, anymore. It's so, <laughs> coppercrab.bigcartel.com. <laughs> if you would like to grab merch from our band, Entheos, which I do vocals in, Naveen plays drums, then hit up entheosstore.com. Today, the guest on our podcast is Scott Carstairs of Fallujah, or Scott Truck Ramp, as Mark Lewis likes to call him. Yeah. yeah. The newest, uh, the newest member of the Nashville fucking metal crew, yeah, dude. Yeah, let's go. Welcome. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, bro. cheers. Cheers. So right when you moved here, you were immediately greeted with like the worst weather yeah. possible <laughs> and very non-Californian weather. No. no so that was yeah. new for me. <laughs> How do you like it? Yeah, we it? got yeah. hit. That was the worst weather that I've seen since we've lived here. For Same. sure. Dude, and everybody Same. was like, oh, it'll be fine, bro. Everybody just gets hyped up every year and then the snow comes and it melts the next day. It's fine. And I remember being like three days later, I'm like, yo, the, the snow is not melting, bro. Like, yeah. What's yeah. going <laughs> on, yeah. dude? Yeah. 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 And, and uh, where my house is, is kind of a... I think most people were able to get back to doing stuff maybe three days after the storm hit, but I live on this hill and it was covered in ice, so I couldn't get my car up or down it. Okay. Oh, so, and yeah. Kyle came to come pick me up. He couldn't come up the hill or whatever, so I had to go meet him at the bottom of the hill, and then he would Just walk. take me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so I didn't go outside. Or I, I went to his house, but we don't have to go to the main road to go anywhere, but I didn't go to that main road till like five or six days after the storm hit. I remember being like, oh, yeah, I haven't seen any of this covered in snow. I've been in my house for like five days but know, i've been busy tracking so i didn't really notice it too much but yeah that was kind of a what a welcome to come in here <laughs> yeah it's like, hello there's snow now and the the thing about it here compared because i'm from des moines you know it's oh, i didn't know iowa that. yeah i thought you're from cali no so compared to des moines where there's like a full-blown infrastructure to deal with snow yeah. here they they don't get snow enough here for that to be a thing there are no like huge plows so the the back roads like where we live don't get plowed off ever i noticed yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was saying i'm gonna set up like one of those plows on the van Dude, and yeah. just come through like a local hero. Bro, you could. Just, you probably could make some good money. Yeah, too, you know. Dude, right? I know, right. Yeah, the back it, roads dude. just get people to throw you tips or something. You'd make like thousands what, of dollars. I I get some yeah, a bunch of biddies. Sure. I'll take some biddies. <laughs> throw those in the Twitch. <laughs> no, I mean, my wife and I, we were thinking like if, if some kid came up to us like, you want to clear the street, I would give him some money for sure. I was like, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I'd throw a 20 at that. For sure. Yeah, because yeah. our road, though we don't really live on a hill, so we could mm -hmm. leave any day, but it was covered in ice because, you know, during the day it would melt and then at yeah. night it would freeze and it was like a skating rink out there yeah, so it got was way worse three days in or something yeah, totally. yeah, that, was, yeah. that was really shitty yeah. yeah that was really shitty Good times up. so you guys haven't really got to do much since you no yeah because yeah. yeah. the and, night and, she got here was yeah storm. yeah the night my wife got here because i was here a week earlier you know i took everything in the band's van and trailer which was crazy by the way like filled that thing as much as i've ever filled it ever oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. i filled that before on some tours <laughs> where we had lots of merch but never that much so did you have stuff going all the way into the front seat uh yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah. well yeah. I took uh well, what I took the two I took two benches out of the the van and put that in the trailer and then the trailer was literally filled to the top and the top layer was my guitars right so the yeah. very very right top was just like sixteen guitars stuffed all like on the top and then the whole back of the van was filled up all the way to the front seat and I was just the whole two thousand miles I was like any moment now either a, a pop tire or a broken axle and I'm gonna have to figure that I'm already, <laughs> already got all these contingency plans and stuff okay and, that's good that's and, hey. and luckily we got across you know and and it kind of was you know because we came out here to Nashville and we were talking with you guys and had other couple friends and you guys recommended like dude don't Try not to take anything with you. It's not worth it. Oh, that's so what I, I'm saying, dude. So I tried to minimize yeah. it, just my gear, and yeah. I got rid. I've donated a bunch of stuff, a bunch of furniture. So yeah. We just got across, got the yeah. van. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you guys came, you didn't have any furniture. You just bought all kinds of new uh, stuff when you got here. I managed to bring my Glouch, which is my Gleam couch. I was able to like... <laughs> Wait, what's that? <laughs> it's just a couch that I have like... When I have guests over, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. It's the guest couch or whatever. And yeah. somehow I was able to like disassemble that. And then... Uh, glouch, what else? dude. Yeah, we called it Glouch. <laughs> We're either calling that or the Blasting Couch. Or that was another name. We had a bunch of fucking names for it. Yeah, I just let the chat come up with funny stuff for everything. I was just saying that we need to get a couch over there. 
Oh like, yeah, yeah. So yeah. If there's anybody who the wants guest to just come couch. chill, right. who's not going to be on the podcast? Yeah, because you could bring friends, have a party. A little yeah, bit. yeah, absolutely. Which is something that I do want to do one time, uh, sometime. Well, what I wanted to do point. because last week, right when you got here, that Gorod wormhole show oh, got I was canceled. Go. I was yeah, I know. Well, I know, what I wanted to do, I was like, "Fuck it, let's get them to play our house. We have a studio in our house, so I was like, let's get them over here. We'll have a podcast. Have a crazy. It wasn't a joke for me. Wanted to do it. I was like, I was coming up with ideas, like how do we make this happen but, but they all avoided uh nashville they went down to alabama oh, probably good, uh, yeah. good idea yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i Much remember looking better. outside and being like the show's tomorrow good god yeah, no yeah, way yeah, it was like yeah, not, yeah, not well, gonna happen yeah, yeah, yeah. touring in january is fucking not, not that's good. a hard thing to commit yeah, to scary. you know yeah it's scary the worst time to have, tour have you guys ever crashed on tour no uh, yeah but <laughs> not, you have no. right yeah, yeah 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 so february it was sick what um, happened uh we were going on i-80 and we were really young too you know like i've i don't think i would let that happen again but i think it must have been like 18 or 19 or something but i remember chilling at my friends uh who's on twitch his name's kim sushi i was at his house in uh utah we were hanging out and we had half of the crew let's just leave bro you know we got the show tomorrow let's just drive through the night and i'm like i just want to stay here and they're like you just want to stay here to party and i'm like fine yeah. Well, fucking. Like, well, yeah, kind of actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean it's, <laughs> it's true. Man. You know, they hit you with that. You just want to party, bro. Like that's not a real reason. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, but whatever. So I was like, fine, we'll go. And then, uh, you know, we drove from Utah to Denver, which you can't just like draw. Drive. That's one of the worst. Oh ones. my yeah, god, it's the yeah. one. It's the one. And <laughs> yeah. we knew it too. I was like, fuck, that's the one. Everybody's because all the bands had crashed there, right? Was it back then? It was like bleeding through, and like oh, yeah, all I the homies that. had crashed mm-hmm. in that same strip of highway, but. For those of you guys that don't, don't know, there's like I-70, which goes from Utah straight into Denver, but uh, bands usually go up north into Wyoming and across to I-80, and it's just like this huge stretch of road that like doesn't really get taken care of, and it was like around maybe 6 a.m., and I was sitting in the passenger seat, and I remember like I was falling asleep because it was like 6 a.m., I was like, fuck, I'm almost there, and then uh, all of a sudden the driver was like, oh, shit, and I woke up, and we were just like <coughs> sliding because uh, it's just like one road going one way and one road going the other way. And there's like this big dirt patch in the middle of it. And we just kind of lost traction and we were just sliding towards the dirt patch. So I was like, Oh shit, we're about to just like hit the dirt and have this like crazy bumpy ride. And it's, that's how it's going to be. And as soon as we hit the dirt, we started flipping over and the, the windshield was just blue. So it must've like, thrown the van like upwards or something because i didn't see any dirt i just saw blue <laughs> like blue sky oh my god yeah and we were stupid kids man we had all this dumb shit in between the van you know you try to customize the van like yeah we'll put the laptop there it'll be yeah, sick yeah. Yeah. Movies. Yeah. that fucking thing hit me in the face like oh, oh my god cracked me in the face i had this crazy bump and concussion and when we landed I, like i was like oh i don't feel good and then my arm slipped back into it's just, like it's like thump and i was like oh like you know like this like nasty like like uh, like the white you know, you know what i mean you get all clammy yeah, yeah, i didn't yeah. even realize my arm uh, was dislocated and i was like oh god and it slipped back in and i didn't know my head was bumped until the, the band was like yo bro your head's fucked dude and i was like oh and and rob the bassist had our time he was you know like we were sleeping right so he was like long ways in the bench and he had his head you know how the windows are on the side or whatever yeah i guess when it rolled his head was on the window and it he hit the dirt like it shattered and he hit his head on the dirt outside and like scratched his head up super bad but his head came back in the van luckily on on the flip and Holy so me and him were the ones that got messed up and we had, to, we had to go straight to the hospital really and, okay so nobody else was wearing a seatbelt or anything none i mean me and the driver that's it and dude i kind of had and this, so how did they not get like completely just uh well uh, there's there's some homies you might know like uh, carlos from antagony and yeah. rob oh, yeah. maramonti they were there and uh we had like one of those like where we took the two back benches out and then we customized it and made like a little top bunk and lower yeah, bunk uh-huh. or whatever. Right. yeah we kind of so, th- so they were and i'll I, because of that i don't want to do it again it just freaks me out but like they were up there uh, they were on the bunk yeah, they were on the bunk okay. like long ways, you know what I mean? So like along the van or whatever. Yeah, uh-huh. And they, uh, when it flipped, it like, luckily they hit the top of the van and then they came back down because the whole top of the van crunched in that space or whatever. But, right. But they went up and came down so hard that they broke the two by fours and shattered the bed down. <laughs> oh my God. Like, oh, go and just like crushed it. And oh, really? Yeah, I have. I'll find it. I should have got the picture. I didn't even know we were talking about it. So you guys got like really lucky, basically. I mean, dude, go- Goat Horror rolled up and I remember a uh, homie from Goat Horror, Ben, was just looking at me like, Dude, uh, like you kids don't even know, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just like, fuck. So, uh, <laughs> was that er- like early on into touring? That was 2012. So, you know. Wow, you guys have been touring for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, since we were like at the moment I graduated high school that summer. 
Holy It was the first shit. tour that I went on to. And I was still trying to go to college and shit. Mm-hmm. So I would like go on breaks and stuff. And then we were just like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you quit college? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go, we, got, we got a first, uh, we got a, a tour from Suffocation to do Europe. Mm-hmm. And it was like, do the tour or cancel or do a quarter of state school or whatever or, yeah. or and find a replacement guitarist to go on our first euro tour i was like nah. <laughs> hey, fuck, <Hell> that. No. <laughs> fuck school yeah, yeah. yeah it's like I know, school yeah. ain't cool anymore dude no way suffo dude. is cool yeah, yeah. It's it's funny. now funny. is it that when people it. are yeah, like uh, way cool yeah i hear people that are like kind of torn about when they get to that age yeah like 18 or 19 it's like oh, oh should yeah. i go to school or go on yeah. tour and for me, that was not even ever a thought. I was like, yeah. I'm you never going to college. I'm metal. Let's well, go. Where, where were you at when you were 18? Because I, uh, I know like a lot of the bands you play for, but I don't know what oh, age yeah. you were. It um, seems like you've been alive Animosity for like had, ar- had already been. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we had already been touring for a little while. Uh, well, let's think. Like what 18. bands were you touring with? Uh, so when I was 17... I went on tour with a band called Hoods, like that. I know Hoods. Band. That's yeah, Bay yeah. Area stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was in Animosity, and we played shows with them. Yeah, right. And we were super young, but the other guys in the band were younger than me. I was the oldest guy in the band. Really? I yeah. thought you were the youngest in the band. I was the youngest in Anim- and I was the oldest in Animosity, and obviously the oh, youngest so you're, in Hoods. Oh, so you played for Hoods. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but okay. so uh, I, was, I was the oldest in Animosity, so everybody else was... I was like, you know, a couple years ahead of them. Okay. And, then, and, I, and I got out of high school early. Because I hated school, oh, so really? I did like this program in Santa Cruz to Venture or whatever not go to school. Yeah. yeah, 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 sure. That's a good. I mean, I wish I did yeah. that. Yeah, and then well. I was kind of like <laughs> taking classes at like Cabrillo just to like, you know, tell people I was in school. Kinda. Sure, yeah, yeah. And then because I was because I was young, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I was basically just waiting for animosity to be ready to go on tour. Yeah. And then Hoods needed a drummer. And I'm like 17, and I'm like, I want to fucking go on tour. I've never been on a tour before, you know what I mean? So, all right, all right, all right. So, yeah, I went on tour with them and did, like, a bunch of tours. Oh, sick. Yeah. Any, uh, do you remember any of the bands that you played with that were pretty sick? Yeah, I mean, they were, they were like, kind of more DIY tours, so they weren't, like, month long. It was like, we're going to do 10 days with, like, West Coast. some West Coast bands, like, Embrace the End and Fuck yeah, I remember Embrace Beneath the End. Beneath the Ashes, I don't know if you remember that band. Uh, what about um, uh, Moria? Did you all fuck with Moria? Yeah, we never really played with them. I remember we that band. Who was in that band? I barely remember. I'm just trying to think of all the Bay Area bands that I grew up. They were from like Selena I, re- I remember that name because see, the thing is that Iowa kids, we were way into the Bay Area, dude. Really? We, I could see We it. loved Bay Area a shit. A lot of good stuff happened. A lot, yeah, a ton of good stuff back then was coming. Like all of the OG Deathcore stuff to me was coming out of the yeah. Bay Area. Yeah, I was yeah. way into a bunch of those bands. So. And you could use the top eights, search around. <laughs> exactly. Oh, hell yeah. Totally. That's what I was doing. Yeah, <laughs> totally. That was a good way to find out about bands. Fuck yeah. It sure. really was. All night, dude. Yeah, yeah, totally. I loved that. And then, uh, let's see. So that was 17. And then um, Animosity would do like little tours like in the summer, like 10 days. We're going to go to Texas. And mm. then, you know, shit like that. And then the singer went, so he, he wanted to do one year or semester at college. Because he was like, if I do a year, then it'll be easy for me to get back in. Because he got accepted to UCSC or something like that. All right. I don't know anything about school. So okay. <laughs> Straight up. I'm, All right. I'm anti-school. That's base. Proudly anti-school. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, <that's sick. laughs> So he did his thing or whatever. And then once he was ready, we, we just like took off. And that was probably when I was like 19. Damn, that's sick. And then, you know, we toured for a while. You know, it's crazy. The first death metal show I ever saw... Like, what got me into death metal, which I was like, I'm done. This is all I'm going to listen to forever. Because at yep. the time, I had, was listening to, like, Trivium around 2004, 2005. Like, Trivium and a dozen Furies. And this, that wait, kinda, a, wait, a dozen Furies, the band that was on Battle for OzFest yeah, 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 yeah. and got yeah. voted on oh, to yeah, OzFest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the show? <laughs> I didn't watch the show. My friend was into the show. But he's like, this band is sick. And that's how I got into the band. But I never That's... watched the show with um, Sharon Osbourne and all. That, yeah, and all it's funny. I've gone whatever. back because it's on YouTube, all of the, the episodes. Oh, and I've man. gone back and Probably, watched it. Is it cringy? Like, <laughs> well, I'm just imagining me and all of my friends being the bands on the fucking dude, that'd be the, hard. The thing. Yeah, and we're You're all like, competing. You guys aren't really headbanging and singing. Like, <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> like, you know, no. Like, yeah, the thing's yeah, like, yeah. I, I think I only watched like a moment. And I was like, I don't know that. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's now it. it hits too close to home. Oh, but yeah. when I was 12, I was like, that's what I want to do, you know? So it was cool to watch. But that's 
But they anyway, up. back to your story. But yeah, it's I mean, it was, it was, I was getting hyped up for OzFest, which got me into a bunch of bands because 2005 had like Between the Bird and Me and Black Dahlia Murder. And it kind of was like, all right, well, if I'm going to go to this fest, I'm going to look up all these bands and see what they're like or whatever. Totally. And, and I think it was that same summer that I went down with my friends down to Fresno. And then we went and saw a uh, Jopper Cowboy from a second story window, Animosity. Yeah. Yeah. That Cal- was 2005. Cattle Decapitation. And I just yeah, saw yeah. Travis Ryan. And I told him <laughs> about that. I was like, right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's insane. And I remember at, at that show, I, I went home and that was it. I just like, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't even listen to the other music. <laughs> oh, ever I could again. do yeah, just like, <laughs> I was all about Job for a Cowboy. Anna Moss had all the CDs. Bro. That's sick. Yeah, once you go to a did. show like that, dude, that was where it's like too. underground and everybody there is young and it's like, oh yeah, there's not, it's not like corporate. You know what I mean? Sure, You're yeah, just yeah. like, I am this. I'm so sick that I'm here. <laughs> yeah. And everyone else sucks. Yeah. You, you feel know? like, you feel like you're on to something. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, like no one else it. knows about. You're and on something. Yeah. Yeah. You you're know? like, I've, I've arrived. I'm Dude, here. That's yeah. how I felt. Man. Yeah. yeah. From a second story window, they put on a sick show that. Night. Yeah. So yeah. That was headline. So, uh, wh- where was that, that you went to that, that one? It was Fresno. I oh, know Fresno. That. Fresno. Yeah. So weird. Some weird small area. I forgot the opening band. They were called like. Agony or uh, it wasn't JFAC. They played. There's a there's a local band. A, I think one more band played before. Okay, job for a cowboy. Yeah, yeah. And they had they, the so that with was the big ears there. Uh, you know, that was their first like U.S. tour. That was it. I, yeah, because yeah, they just blew up from the fucking entombment. I think, and I was, and they were like the, the most hype band on the tour. I remember that. Yeah, yeah and everyone was jealous. People they, flip they, out. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. opening the tour, and they were. Yeah, the yeah. Most they were. You sure they weren't? Sad? They were first. Oh, hundred percent. There must have been a band right after them. Then, yeah, yeah, us. Really? Man, yeah. I it was, it was like uh, some weird band. It must have been a local opener, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah I okay, think it was a local. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was a uh, job for... Co- no, you know what? That tour was in 2006 because yeah, we played a show year. on 6606. Oh, then oh. maybe I'm thinking the following summer. I must have I must have gone to 2005 OzFest and then 2006 OzFest with the Red Chord playing. I remember yeah. Red Chord played 2006 and then that show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Yep. Yeah, and then yeah, a bunch of sick shit came out in 2006, like uh, that decapitated record, Organic Hallucinosis, oh, and, yeah. and Akeldama, and all sorts of shit started coming out. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah out. That, that year was kind of the beginning of like a new era of metal. Dude, that's my era right there. Mine too, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a little older than you guys, so that's... Yeah, Naveen you're was... Older than, uh, are we, uh, well, yeah, so I was... You guys? I'm, I'm 35. I'm, you're saying, you're 35, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, that was that was your that was my era too, but I was in the bands at that Yeah, point. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Well, I mean, yeah, I already knew about I it. I think my era was like more 2001. Like okay, Destroy yeah, yeah. the Opposition. Oh, yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. Origin, yeah. self-title. Oh, yeah. I liked Origin a lot. Or like All the, the cool kids at school wore Origin shirts and shit. Oh, yeah. Origin was one of those bands for me, like what you're talking about. When I saw Origin live with James Lee with Freight Train on vocals, I was like, I'm like, dude, bru- most brutal. Fuck. Like, dude, I can't even yeah. tell Extreme. my... Like parents about this. You know yeah, I mean? no. I mean, yeah, dude. What it about? was way beyond. <laughs> Another one was Brain Drill. You remember Brain Drill? Yeah, 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 I remember yeah, Brain sure. Drill. That was sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. of course. That Creek. was like <laughs> the Rings of Saturn before the Rings of Saturn. Yeah, oh, but that shit sounded good, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, uh, I actually jammed with them uh, once. I was going to oh, potentially drill? play drums. Play drums? Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? But I can't. I didn't it. even I know that. You time. jammed with Brain Drill? Yeah, I jammed with them. Super fast. It's yeah, yeah. Lord Could Marco just, style. Oh, yeah, dude. It's yeah. totally Lord Marco. It was like, I don't know. It might have been when they were, before they even made their album. Or, I don't really know. can't remember the time. Actually, I do remember. It was when I was 20. So that would have been 2005. Damn, sick. Yeah. So. Epic. That's but I, d- <coughs> I wound up not doing it, obviously. Mm, yeah, yeah, that'd been a hard gig. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would. I'm actually better day. at playing fast stuff now than I was then. Really? Yeah, if you can believe that. Yeah, that's I true. It. I've just like picked up more techniques, but then I was just more like, just do it, you know. Just you've worked for so many bands, right? Um, a couple. Like like Job for a Cowboy, that's tons of blasts in that new that new track. Yeah, that was a little bit different one, from what yeah. I'm used to you playing. That one like, oh, has shit. more blasting. Yeah, than the rest, as opposed to like you did the uh, Whitechapel record, which is more like groovy and yeah, yeah. That had a lot of blasting gospel. in it too, though. Are you into gospel kind of stuff? Kind of. It seems like you kind of <clears throat> add some of that. Yeah, I think I I mean I have like a minimal amount of it in, in my style or whatever, but like I I am I have enough into it. For a metal drummer, yeah, you know what I mean, well, I've like, seen metal drummers sneak it in. It's yeah, yeah, it's totally. like uh, Chasen I mean, is another oh, drummer yeah. that does that, one which of my is favorites. Mine too. Earth. Yeah, 
Yeah. And Ben, the guy who was in Whitechapel. Absolutely. Oh, that. Guy, yeah, he was super yeah. sick. He was super ben sick. Ben Harkwell oh, wrote, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like your your style kind of became more of that after being an animal. I mean, before Animals, it was definitely like that. But in Animals is when yeah, like, I after that, it became a little up. more, even more choppy. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I kind of, compared to somebody who's actually into that type of drumming, I'm pretty novice. But compared to metal drummers, yeah, I'm like, you know, gospel, fucking yeah. let's go. All the weird syncopation. <laughs> just makes you sound so sick, dude. I know, I love it. Thank you. It's Thank true. You. So did you start Fallujah, like, right around yeah. that time? Is Fallujah your first band? Yeah. Like, <laughs> really? Yeah, dude. <laughs> dude, Scott, you just might be, like, real. one of the only people who's stayed with the first band you started. I mean, it makes sense. I'm the only one left, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, so what year did you... Are you, like, the person who started Fallujah? It was me and the singer, Alex. We started okay. in high school, and, you know, we just kind of, like, both wanted to be in a band, and we were into all these bands. Like, we met each other and knew we were into all these bands we were just talking about, and we're like, let's do this, you know? And yeah, yeah. In the Bay Area, and it just... Yeah. I think we had Animosity, one. you're welcome. Yeah, you're no. <laughs> pretty much, dude. I had the like, straight up, dude. I had the. I gotta find. I'll show you this hilarious picture of me, like a little baby, and I got the one with like the the moon and the wolf. You know? What I'm oh yeah, about? I, it was I all know hyped that. Up, dude, I was looking all cool. I feel like I had the foil. We have that one. Too. I feel like I feel like I have. Oh, that you one had the closet. foil one. That's one that I'm like okay. when Leo, because Leo will re-release animosity shirts. I'm like, dude, oh, really? why haven't you yeah, re-released a one. fucking Actually, old that, foil shirt? So the one you're talking about. And a bunch of the classic ones are all on indie merch store. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. like they all got reprinted. They're pretty I, sick. I too. saw one of them because uh, you know I just moved here, so I was like trying to go through shirts, figure yeah, out yeah. which to donate. You know, you always have tons of metal shirts torn mm -hmm. and yep. stuff. And yep. I think I found one of them deep in there. It was all messed up. Dude, That's you might sick. be able to. Well, if you ever want to get rid of one of those, I'm sure they're going for some money. No on way. Deep hop. Nah, <laughs> I've looked like it up. I found this one too. This is. Uh, yeah, I've looked it up. They're not Lorna Shore. Beanie I got when they opened for us. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheney has a... That's right, when they <laughs> opened for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ha Dude, I have, a, I have a windbreaker, a Lorna Shore windbreaker oh, that sick. I got. They were not opening for us, but they were playing one band ahead of sick. us, opening for Rings of Saturn, actually. Epic, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm like, fuck, how much money is this thing worth now? Because I'm, I'm not getting rid of it, though. I love yeah, that yeah, shit. for sure. I've never worn the windbreaker. Oh, that's nice. The, it's in pristine. It's a small. That's the, it's a small. Yeah. Sell it. It's just not really, I don't know. It's just not something I would wear, but it's fucking sick. It's got that same logo on we it. We do have it. Flesh though. coffin. Part of, yeah. Part of the collection. Flesh coffin. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I honestly <laughs> wish that I'd never got rid of any of my shirts. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, get, I, I did. I'll get rid of metal shirts. Like I'll, yeah. I'll get rid of rando shirts that are like, okay, I don't need it, but I can't help it. And I get made fun of by my wife and my mom and shit. They're like, why do you have, you'll never, you never wear, like I have a severed savior <clears throat> shirts and necrophagia shirts. Dude, yeah, 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 and they're totally yeah. ugly when you put them on, but like that's never going to get rid of them. After yeah, this, yeah. we have like a whole section of our closet that, we've built out to be our band shirt oh, section. Sick. It's right. basically a store because Naveen and I combined have like, that's right. You guys like 300, 300. Shared problem. You guys yeah, both yeah. go on tour and shit. It's yeah, really, yeah. but it's also obsessive because we both buy shirts as well as the tour thing. So it's right, like yeah, just, yeah. you know, constantly. Yeah. I will buy Like shirts. if I hear about a band that I like nothing, you know, like I just, I heard them. They're not like my favorite oh, band or anything, but I may have seen that cover actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, Matt Kleiner is the guy's name. I think I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. He's a drummer. Yeah, I think this I was, is like his I like one I, man. I was looking for drummers, so I think dude, I, he came across my uh, radar. Insanely yeah, like, sick, familiar. dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout uh, out sick drummer. They were but I'm saying, like, I heard the album and I'm like, I'm buying the shirt. Like, <laughs> there you go. That's like, sick. I bought it like the next day. You know what I mean? Because it's like, that's how you support bands. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you got them listening to it on Spotify. It's not going to really. Oh, that doesn't do shit. Yeah. Go so I always buy shirts. Do you guys do Patreon? No, do you? <clears throat> yeah, we just started. It's been a really cool thing, honestly. I couldn't do it by myself, but luckily now I got Kyle helping me with stuff. It's been... Oh, so you're doing a band Patreon as opposed to... You're not doing like a, a Gleamer Patreon nah, I don't thing. really think it's necessary. Everybody's... So they're so already support, gleamed yeah, up. They already support so much on Twitch, and it's yeah, just, yeah. I'd rather put my effort into doing the band Patreon because it's the band Patreon's got like playthroughs and lessons and cool demos, and I guess I would do that for my own, but I'd rather just grow that for the the group yeah. so we could do what we want what we want well so my question with the patreon has always been so do you post those things on patreon and then you go outside of the paywall you post them also on youtube like at a later time or yeah, sometimes like usually like for the playthroughs that's what i contribute a lot to not lately because i've been tracking but you know i'll let them get early access to the playthrough and then i'll give them a tab to the playthrough so youtube mm -hmm. they'll eventually see it but they don't get a tab with it mm -hmm. and then 
there's a bunch of other cool stuff. That's like, cool. Uh, like we have Empyrean, the last album we did, but it's just the guitars, bass, and drums. So you could hear Evans playing really well. And like, you know, that's cool stuff. And then that's really cool. We have like a hidden track, like one of those Japanese bonus tracks from two albums ago that we never, people don't hear. That's up on there. A bunch of random stuff. We have album recommendations and I don't know. Just, just put like, up the goodies. Yeah, yeah. Just like stuff that's like maybe, I don't know, interesting enough for someone who's really into the band, but yeah. not really worth posting on the internet. You mm-hmm. know, just like little totally. inside things. You know? Totally. Which there is a there's a place for that. I mean, that makes sense to do that stuff. There are yeah. people who are who want to see that shit. Yeah, in know? the process. Yeah, yeah. And I Absolutely. might even we might even start streaming uh, like some of the because uh, I think Patreon now has it to where you could stream or something like that. And maybe for one of the tiers, we'll stream some of the tracking or something like <clears> that. Just hang out in the room while mm-hmm. we work on, you know, whatever we're working on or something like that. Yeah. That's cool. So you're, tra- you're, are you working on a new album right now? Yeah. Right? yeah. If we, if it'll be, uh, it's, uh, my deadline is basically the end of March is when it has to be mixed and mastered. So yeah, Damn. I gotta, gotta have everything done and all that. And we're tracking, uh, Mike Lowe from, uh, in Fury. He's going to be tracking the drums. And yeah. yeah. Mike's our boy. He's tracked a lot of stuff at our house. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah Mike, that's what we were, ta- yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah. Mike rules. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I think in fact he called me on the way here. He's like, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. so I, uh, when you're writing is it like you and kyle are writing together now yeah, that's how I mean, you're doing i write a lot faster when i got somebody in the room with me because mm-hmm. i kind of like play off of their feedback a little bit because i could just i'm really good at improvising kind of just jamming but it all kind of feels the same to me so i'm kind of just like playing and i'm just like he's like ooh, and i'm like oh, you like that all right i could expand uh-huh. on, i could expand on that and then it <clears> usually goes pretty fast you know but you know when i was in california and we were in different parts i just kind of had to get it done but for me, it's I love having people in the room. That's what I'm used to. Like I'm used to always sitting at my computer and having like a couch full of random people goofing off and you know just playing stuff and showing them the licks and kind of expanding upon it. But I don't that's know. sick. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So is that how you like? If if you have a riff that people like, how do you go about like expanding that into a song? Just oh uh, well, depends on expanding it on the song. But you know, if we're just like improvising and jamming out, like you know. There's like that first stage where we start like cataloging kind of like sections and stuff and seeing what we like. And then maybe the next stage is we expand upon it. Like, you know. Oh, that's cool. I like to have like a, I like to like execute like ideas. You know what I mean? Like, all right, I had this idea that we could do like a heavy part that goes into a blast. You know, I have all this stuff like written down in notes because I feel like the inspiration for that stuff never comes when you're like sitting there. You know what I mean? With a blank screen. It comes when you're like driving or you hear a song. You're like, oh, that'd be sick. And in one of our albums, you know what I mean? So you just write that concept down. And when we finally sit down, it's like, all right, I have a couple concepts I want to execute. And then you execute them and feel like I'm indifferent usually when I finish it. I'm like, all right, okay, or whatever. But when you come back later and you compare it to some of the other ideas you had, you're like, yo, we were onto something with this guy right here. Let's expand on it. Let's like actually take it from being improvised guitars to like finish the idea and see where we can place it. You know what I mean? And then the other thing I don't... I don't really like to like have riff salad or whatever. I feel like once you got like two or three sections, like your whole song is there. Like yeah, the, yeah. the motifs, totally. everything. Like you know, yeah, yeah. It's kind of immature to have a like a, a certain set of motifs in this part of the song, and then another set of motif, like rhythmic motifs and stuff. Yeah, I like got if you. You stick to one thing, you just do it. So it should be able to finish the song. I agree with that. I feel like that's where a lot of bands lose me is yeah. the the riff salad thing. The the lack of emphasis on songwriting because sometimes in in like tech or prog music it's mm. the thing to you know let's go on forever we can fit a thousand riffs into this song yeah. but really there's a, an art to songwriting and as and a re, a song is what lasts throughout time it's not like riff salad yeah i think so like if 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 you, if you think of a song and it represents a feeling as opposed to just like, Oh, that was a nice compilation of cool stuff or whatever. Yeah, right. Like this song is the heavy dark song or whatever. This song is the fast kind of like, uh, I don't know, Epic song or whatever it is. And just kind of honing on on a feeling, but obviously not too much. There has to be dynamics and that's just part of songwriting. Like we have to go out of that feeling and then back into it or whatever. But you know, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. want, I want each song to have its own feeling and then the whole album to feel like, a good like they're all related to each other but yeah. not the same you know totally yeah it's like a set of songs because you want the album to relate to each other you don't want it to be like some just you know a super stark contrast maybe you can start with something that super contrasts from the last song but you yeah. do want the songs to fit together whether right. or not you're writing like a conceptual album that all floats together or you know one that's just a bunch of different singles right, you, right. you want them to fit together it's yeah. a collected piece of work, so. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, I think the last album we were like, 
uh, you know, I just wanted a bunch of singles. So that's like every, so it, it kind of sounds like it's just a bunch of singles. And now this album, I'm kind of like, oh, I don't like that. I remember missing albums where they had like two or three weird songs that kind of didn't fit in the yeah, format. Yeah. And then totally. it makes the whole, even if it's the same length of album, it makes it way more adventurous. Like you went through something more than just like eight or nine, like here's the verse and the chorus and the solo. And it would give you all this stuff that you wanted, you know, like. So yeah, I think you're going to go into different like phases of songwriting. Yeah. Absolutely. For me, especially. You know, I've done riff. Sal- I've done beyond riff sal. I don't even know what you would call it, but you know, <laughs> just like riff machine gun. <laughs> sure. And then, kind of progressed into more of what you're talking about, having the emotion, sticking with it, making like this kind of cool vibe. And then, yeah, I think I think right now we're kind of we're doing an EP. Right. Or it's already done. It's been done for a while. But we're gonna put it out this year. Out. And it's all singles, you know. So we we're kind of like, all right, we because our last album was like this huge long concept and you like listen to it all the way through right. and which is sick by the way Hell thank yeah. you thanks thank you. like you feel kind of like older after you hear it you know what i mean i kind of like albums like that where after you listen to it and it ends you're like whoa i just like aged yes. a year you know what i mean Fuck yeah like a, like a dank movie or <laughs> yeah, something yeah yeah it's like, it's like yeah, forrest yeah. gump or something damn <laughs> but then now <laughs> i think once we were playing all that material on tour like it's really cool and awesome but i was kind of like hmm, we're kind of missing the like just the bangers well, they're just right? the yeah you know the ebb and flow man like yeah, yeah. so ne- so then we kind of went the other way and we wrote like five independent like i mean i'm calling them bangers but you know when you they're still pretty crazy mm. i guess you know you should call it hype train, should be the name they're hype train. it's more hype, hype train, train. Hype. <laughs> but i think honestly when we make our next album i want to do like what you're talking about where it's like you have some bangers. You have some really weird songs. I have a yeah. whole fucking collection of, of it. You know, because I like all kinds of music. You know, I like yeah. I like crazy riff salad insanity. Yeah, and then I like, you know, well-made, you know, songs, quote unquote, and staying with the vibe and the feeling. So yeah. it's like I'm always just trying to ride in between all of it. Right. I feel like, yeah. Lately, I'm just trying to be more playful with the music, if that makes sense. I feel I like, like I've been such a nerd my like whole that. life that everything is like really organized. Yeah, and, really, yeah. and I don't do things for no reason. Now I'm trying to do stuff just like, hey, I'm just throw that in there. This yeah, weird yeah. little idea. And then I realized that's what I liked about I love certain, that. Uh, certain kinds of music. Like the faceless, they were very playful. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. like, what the fuck just happened? You like, know? we'll just like, do yeah, that. Yeah, we'll yeah. Fuck it. And you're just it. left there wondering, like, why did why did you do that you know like <laughs> that's true what, what you came up with you know like yeah yeah no explanation you know? those are my favorite type of bands like the faceless is one yeah. of my favorite metal bands that's Same. ever existed yeah, yeah. and it's Same. like one of the things that i love the most about keen is that he could go or you know the entire band is that he could go from super crazy death metal bangers then he can fucking throw a grunge song on the record yeah. and it's still a great song yeah, yeah, yeah. he's just that kind of songwriter where he can go all over the board and write super good stuff yeah. that's like within all of these different genres i yeah. like bands that span through many different genres and they're yeah. able to do that seamlessly yeah there's depth like there's like stuff to dig into mm-hmm. when you like i remember yeah, that yeah. Ba- that band got me into alan holdsworth and Same. psychroptic and a bunch of stuff just being like oh that's that's how they got that you know it's just so yeah. how did you come put this sound together and you start figuring out the little pieces here and there yeah, you know, yeah. a little bit of alan holdsworth Yep. That was really the first uh-huh. band I heard that I considered to be death metal, where I was like, okay, they're death metal, but they're actually writing like a song. Yeah, You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, like, yeah. I, I, when I first heard it, it was just so profound to me. I was Real. like, yeah, yeah. oh my God. How, like, I want to do that. That's yeah. what I want to do. Like that. How did he do that? You know, I, it was up. just on a whole nother, like the level of, uh, it was serious oh, you know it's like okay we're in like serious music territory and I, and the first song i heard was uh an autopsy oh yeah and it was because i met keen and like went to his house yeah yeah and he just gave me that like it was just guitar and drums mm. on a burn cd so it wasn't even released oh my god no no i didn't even have vocals or anything <laughs> oh wow so that's yeah. crazy and he was like oh yeah you want to hear my band and i was like yeah, yeah sure and he like play and i was just like oh <laughs> my god and like i just could i I was like, dude, it's like Mashuga and death metal, yeah, you're and like, right. it, it like the song structures were like kind of more simple, you know, like he wouldn't oh, do yeah. yeah, they're short songs that would that would always mm-hmm. trip me up. How the fuck do you fit all that? Shit yeah, in I know, three yeah. minutes, and like, and it would like he he was so good at like he still is repeating the right riffs and just mm. 
Like when you hear Keen's songs, uh, I'm like, oh, it's that song. Dude, you know what I mean? Like, what, like even if it's your first time hearing it, you're like, yeah, yeah that song. It's like, oh, it's clear. always been a song. Yeah, I've, you know? I've always yeah. said that about his solos too. It's like every yeah, single yeah. one of Keen's solos, you're like, wait, that solo didn't exist before because it seems like it's a solo. It's yeah, it seems <laughs> like it's existed nostalgic. forever, you yeah, know. Yeah. And it's yeah. yeah, what an amazing songwriter. And still, like every Faceless still, album, yeah. still to this day is the latest Faceless album fantastic. is fucking so good. Yeah. So I don't unique, know. If you, have so. you heard that one? Um, um, uh, in becoming a ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like. Listen, like I, I did a road trip from SoCal to NorCal. Listen the whole yeah. fucking thing once. Yeah, oh, the whole yeah, discography. Yeah, yeah, I had to do it one time. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to. It was like it was during the writing phase. I'm like, let's rip this whole discography. Totally. You know? Like, yeah, yeah, dude. I, yeah, I was such a nerd. I sent him a message like, "Hey, Mister," you know, like, hey, <laughs> like Mister. I was Michael just wondering Keen? during Uncle Delma, you've been hitting some outside chords and blah blah blah. It was like this. I must have been like 15 or 16 when I wrote it up, and it was hella funny because we. Uh, Ended up doing Summer Slaughter tour with them. And then it was like, just like regular, like, hey, you going to the bar? And I had to contact. And it brought up my old nerdy message. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he literally was like, oh, man, uh, sorry I didn't respond to that. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. It's like, hella funny moment. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, dude, uh, that changed the scope of metal. The Faceless yeah, yeah. was one of those bands. Changed the fucking scope yeah. of metal. So many bands after Uncle Dama, after yeah, yeah. Planetary, obviously. Planetary right. just, you know. And then right before that, I would say Epitaph would be the other f- fucked everybody Absol- up. Just absolutely. ruined everything. Just I yeah, mean, yeah. ruined me, ruined guitar recording. It yeah. ruined everything. Like, I, I remember going to the studio and just being so sad about how far my guitars sounded from necrophages like yeah what, yeah what am i doing wrong and you learn a lot over the 10 years of what they did you yeah, know yeah. Like, i just remember being like well you're not God. like playing at half speed or whatever so i that's... think it was a one note at a time situation yeah yeah, yeah really whatever. is oh, that yeah, yeah. you think that it was tracked one note at a well, time i think i have been i yeah yeah you think you've i think you've, i know, you think you know. Yeah. Yeah. i mean there's a lot of different ways to do it but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can do it I heard it took him eight months to record the guitar yeah yeah i mean it sounds like it. holy shit sounds yeah. like it. Yeah. i feel <laughs> i feel two two types of ways about necrophages all right like on the one hand i love that album yes. and it's one of the best metal albums of all time I'm not gonna i do too i'm not gonna deny that but at the same time like the the type of when i hear okay let's put it this way when i hear a band and their guitars sound like that now mm-hmm. i'm kind of like Dude, just play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like right now, at this phase in my life, I'm more into hearing stuff where, like, I can tell someone played it. Yeah, depends on the music, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it definitely it. depends on the music. Uh, but like, I think there's a way to do it where it sounds good and clean. Yeah. But it's still got a like a little more characteristic than like guitar pro. Sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, that's literally what it is. Basically, yeah. it's just guitar pro. There's no life. Yeah, and sometimes no I feel like notes are coming early or sometimes I feel like guitar players like they're in Guitar Pro so much that like oh, when yeah. they hear their guitar tracks tracked, they're like, "Oh, it doesn't sound as good as the Guitar Pro," and then they like make it too edited, and it's yeah. like, dude, it's okay yeah. if it doesn't sound like Guitar Pro. Like I can tell when it's a Guitar Pro riff, you could it almost changes <laughs> like the yeah. vibe just changes all of a sudden. Like, oh, yeah. okay, someone it's like not a brain made this, a, a program made this. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, do you you don't write in Guitar Pro, right? No, I don't. Yeah, I, yeah. I improvise everything, and then like when I'm recording it, then I'll go into Guitar Pro. I'll, I'll well, luckily now I got Sam in the band, and he. Uh, he transcribes my improvisation and then he'll show me the file of what I improvise and then I go in there and like make it exact. Like yeah, last yeah. night I was just moving notes so the it didn't interfere with the melody. You know, That's shit like that. what That's I do cool. essentially yeah. too. Yeah. yeah like cause corrections. I don't like, I don't know. I, I just don't like things being that like clean i guess oh, you yeah. could say you know what yeah. i mean like, well it's just not our style i mean it's not yeah, your style it's not my style there are certain sure. bands it works for there's su- certain bands who you don't want to hear them not be like hyper edited yeah right like i've seen his passage probably totally. you know, for sure so yeah so much going on you yeah. want that to be very 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 clean of course yeah, absolutely of course. yeah yeah i mean i'm not saying every band falls in this category sure, you know yeah. but i'm just saying like they might have set this standard yeah that's not realistic sure dude i'm a i'm in a uh a know. victim of this standard bro <laughs> i kind of regret sometimes like fuck, why did i choose this genre? Yeah, yeah i would have way more fun in like a dying fetus type band that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like have, that's album would be done right now i'd be like at a restaurant hanging out you know? yeah like honestly for me so i check out metal bands quite a bit yeah. i like surf around and i 
like today I made a post. I was like, drop your brut- most brutal bands. And I post. saw that. Yeah, and like, yeah. I check them all out. Sick. And honestly, when it first starts, if it sounds like that, I just turn it off yeah, like yeah, in yeah. one second. Like, and, and, Interesting. yeah, like I want to hear it like be, I don't know, just original. Like yeah. I want to hear it sound like, uh, like his character, you know? Like, yeah. And I don't want it to be like, I'm not really into stuff that's like sloppy, you know, like I want it to be intentional. Right. I want it to intentionally sound like whatever it is. Yeah. And that yeah. could be a wide variety of different things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you can't sound like necrophages, even if you like, I've played for 12 years. I feel like I'm pretty good at playing death metal. <laughs> like, you, you cannot make it sound like that without yeah, yeah. editing the fuck out of it. So yeah, it's yeah. just yeah. like, it's just, you could recognize it instantly. Like, yeah. Oh, you yeah. Guys for are sure. Playing this, like, you know, it sounds, especially like, Black yeah. Dahlia, like they play their shit for sure. Yeah. They play, they make, maybe they quantize it here and there, but I think those are actual takes, you know? Yeah, like, yeah totally. Mm-hmm. No, I know they're, it sounds I know. Just as good and like, too. honestly, I would like to hear their necrophages album sound like that. Yeah, it would I sound would cool. I wonder. It would sound cool. Like, I would like to hear it. But what, that's, you know. What my, about Spawn of Possession? My opinion. Batman? You know what? I never really got into that. Uh, it's one of my yeah. favorites. I know. Yeah. I know. Everybody really jammed them, and I, and I liked them. But, like, to be honest, I'm like a meathead at heart. All right. Yeah. You yeah. know, dying I just want to hear, yeah, yeah, dying fetus. <laughs> yeah. A lot of slam. Fucking skinless. Remember that okay. band? I, do, yeah, I remember that. Like, I just want to hear, like, ignorant shit. Yeah. Right. Especially now that I'm older. Like, yeah, yeah. The super tech stuff is like cool and I like it, but I just, I'm not going to throw it on. Yeah. I just want to hear like, dun, dun, I, know, dun, I dun, never like, throw on tech stuff, you know, and I want to hear the drums be like kind of sloppy, you know, like if sure, it's yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I just can't, I can't do it, dude. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at, you know, right now. I kind of sure. feel, I mean, well, to me, it just reminds me of work, you know, when I hear, I'm like, oh, guitar tone, <laughs> like, you know, that's not like, I don't, I don't want to be reminded. Yeah, of that, yeah, that yeah, and that's not, I like it. But. Yeah, that's definitely what I'm talking about is like, not what I play at all. You know, like I'm yeah, definitely yeah. more on the cleaner side. It's yeah, probably yeah. a little more tech, yeah. you know, uh, but I guess that's why that's same, same. You know? yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. hear shit that doesn't really sound like what I play. And people have more fun for that other stuff, like, like streaming and playing songs for people on stream, like. People have way more fun listening to Dying Fetus, I think, than some of the tech songs. So we always end up doing like Cattle Decap and Decapitate because it's just like, it's, it's more fun. It's, yeah, it's like more groove. energy. Yeah, yeah, it's more groove. Yeah, so, okay. It's so we spent and badass. like, what, five minutes talking about how great Faceless is, right? Sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. so now I'm going to say something else. Oh. <laughs> how bad they are. No, <laughs> yeah. They're actually terrible. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to go the other way. No. We went to Summer Slaughter... 2014 uh, 2014 this is why right. that's oh, why we that. started entheos yeah. this is like why we started the band yeah and i think fallujah was on that tour yeah i think you guys were i yeah, think yeah. So. that was dying fetus because i have my <clears throat> dying fetus 14 on the back so was, I, yeah the is yeah. murder yeah that is murder was like and, opening uh, right morbid angel oh, they yeah. didn't play the, didn't the san play francisco show oh yeah so fetus yeah. headlined oh yeah I remember and that. so it was faceless right De- decrepit birth and oh, like yeah, decrepit, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I think they played right. I think it, it would have been the lineup would have been Faceless, Dying Fetus, Morbid Angel. Like that's the top three bands, right? Yeah. But it was just Faceless and Fetus, and Morbid Angel wasn't at the show. Right. I think it was like the first. It was either the first show or the last one. It was the first show. The first show. Of the yeah, tour. the region. I think I remember that. <clears throat> I remember being like, "Oh God, yeah." So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, Faceless comes out. They play just. Completely perfect. Oh yeah, they I mean, were awesome. Evan was in the no, band. No, that was Evan was Jeff. in the band. Yeah, oh, Jeff. It was like the Dude, super Jeff, sick lineup. Alex Jeff was on drums. Jeff does not get his flowers. Jeff is one of the best oh, yeah. live vocalists I've ever seen oh, in my yeah. entire life. I've tried him to get to do vocals for us like four times already. Really? <laughs> what was <laughs> like, his answer? Uh, he wanted to, and then he got a job, and I don't know. I have some. There's some reasons why I thought he would do it, you know, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, dude, Most personal stuff, I guess. Ever since he quit the Faceless, I've, it's just been a shame to me that he hasn't been oh, in another band. Because the performance, dude. Was so oh, yeah, dude. yeah, he was really alien. so good. Yeah, yeah. He moved back. And like, uh, like, <clears throat> he oh, killed so much fun that whole tour to watch him. Yeah, I bet he was the best. Yeah. So every member of Faceless, uh, like ten out of ten, right? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then, well, that's why when I, anyone's looking for new band members, they're like, "All right, who did Keen put yeah, in yeah. the faceless?" Right. Let's well, scroll he's pretty down good the at list. Finding people somehow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's sure. like, let's Pro, look at dude. the yeah, list yeah. of Keen's well, people. He's gone now. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Does he want to play with us? <laughs> yeah. So then, the fe- then they, Fetus comes on, yeah. just 
dominates them. Oh, I mean, dude, just probably just makes them look them, so stupid. And I, and I said that to them afterwards. Oh, I was like, dude. you guys got fucking dominated. <laughs> well, like, I it sounded Thanks so be, much sicker. Bean, but right. I, I also remember, <laughs> I feel that played pretty good. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, well, like they fetus. played, they played perfect. They played better than fetus. Hundred wow. percent. Yeah, but fetus is like energy and sound. That's the best. Like the sound guy, like the low end was so crazy, and it was just like dun 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 dun. dun. And it was oh, like, it was dude, amazing. this is so much sicker. Like, sorry, uh, you know. You I know remember I mean? though, Evan would always follow up our story of that with, "Oh yeah, my dad came to see us play the Faceless yeah. with Dillinger, and his dad was like, well, you guys were really good, but." That band that played after oh, no, you yeah, is yeah. really good. They're so wild. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they're not even playing the riffs. Yeah. They're just up there, oh, like, there throwing the guitars. Down. Yeah, just fucking stage diving, not giving a fuck. So, I mean, there is something to be said for, like, the energy, you know. But, okay, but I, I have another story that contradicts <laughs> that one. All right, all right. Oh. I have one that literally Double. contradicts that one. Ooh, I went them. to... Uh, the planetary duality they did a headliner on that tour with vela maya and uh, and fetus was direct support. Abigail. oh no i saw that one yeah planetary what? depravity right they planetary they, depravity yeah yeah i saw that one I okay like, so i saw fucking awesome that, that tour and fetus got smoked by by faceless was that 100%. like was that like derek wow. steve jones it was the, the planetary lineup steve jones was on oh, it, and they were using the um the vetas what was those weird amps uh the fucking the, <coughs> the line veta, six the line yeah, six yeah veta. yeah so it had like that og kind of Dude, tone to it too so well. that i remember that time watching fetus and being like okay pretty sick and then when they played they made fetus look stupid Damn. so it can go either way but i'm saying which would you rather be in though me? Yeah. Oh, I'm going the, fetus, the, all, yeah, day. fetus all day. Fetus all day. I'm going <laughs> so uh, on vocals. Yeah. I'm going the faceless. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I would rather. I'd be a vocalist in the faceless. But yeah, I'd be the vocalist in the terrible. faceless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> drumming for faceless is a nightmare. Oh, that yeah, sounds awful. It is a fucking nightmare. I would always nightmare. just watch Lyle. Like fuck, man, you're just not having a fun time back there. No, it's, it's not fun. That's not a good time. Surgical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Steve Jones is another person who. I fucking wish Steve Jones was in another band because yeah. he wrote some of this. He wrote some of my favorite faceless riffs yeah, and he that. just was amazing. Dude, he was amazing watching him live. It was, he and brought he wrote, a life to the faceless. Yeah, he wrote a lot of good riffs. Damn, you gotta show he me did. which ones. I always try to find out which He wrote, uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh also, yeah, the one that's, that gets smaller and smaller. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah, I, or, yeah, I know what you're talking about. But Keen, like, even when someone else writes a riff, like he keenifies the riff. Yeah, you know sense. what I mean? So it's not just like as it was. Like he I can imagine. It's similar like, uh, to being in a band yeah. with Naveen. Like that's what Naveen will do. You know, if someone else writes a riff, then it becomes a Naveenified riff. Right. Over time. Like I oh, gave no, I like gave Keen a few of my riffs. And I heard about that. And he like he used them for sure. Plant but he added in too. some like yeah. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. But he added in like that. Sounded flesh rotty. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Which was funny because people like, sometimes I have more riffs like that, you know, and they're like, oh, this sounds like, you know. Yeah, I remember the when planetary riff or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember when flesh rot came out, there would be I shouldn't comments. have gave him those riffs. <laughs> <laughs> I regret it all the time. You also gave him the ghost note part. Yeah, there's like some drum parts because I, I was like going to be in the faceless. Either you told me that or somebody. I can't remember. Yeah. So yeah, that's chill though. I don't care about that ghost notes. They can have this. I mean, you can have my ghost notes. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he added in like uh, a bunch of stuff like to the riffs, like the little, the little like how it goes, dig it, 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 and it's like like yeah, I didn't sure, do that, sure, you know, sure, like yeah. he added in those little, like, little spice things, legato lick, in there. and then when it's like you know that that part, like he added in the like little. Like oh, the, the yeah the trippy lead yeah yeah, yeah for sure yeah. so I mean he made it his own obviously but I shouldn't have given that riff that bastard he didn't even say I wrote it on the album <laughs> no no you have to find all this stuff out yourself yeah I, I know like, I was like, like oh did you guys say like I kind of like help write the song and they're like no no no, no, no no we we thanked you in the liner notes so I'm like <laughs> yeah. thank you very much <laughs> thank you to what our the friend fuck, Naveen dude? who had nothing to do with yeah, this yeah. What, sorry I'm a genius bro I don't know what to say <laughs> too nice because I had like demos of random stuff and I'm just like. I'm never going to use this for like, I didn't really write it for any reason. Like I, and I do that a lot now. Like if you look through my computer, there's like tons of riffs that are just, I don't know if I would use them for Anthea's or 
anything. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just like a riff. Just you riff know? of the day. You just kind of laid it Yeah, down. yeah. And they were like, dude, that riff's so cool. Because I would like, you know, me and Keen were like really good friends. Like we would send each other stuff all the time. So, um, like he would send me all the, like all the planetary songs. Like I had all those songs on demo. Wow. Yeah. So Damn. what were you thinking when you hear him? Like, man, people are going to like this. Or like, I wonder if people will like No, this. I was like, this is like, I quit animosity. You're like, when I heard do it. this. This is Yeah, shit. I was like, this is so much sicker than my band. I'm, I need to be in this band. Like, right, this right, is right. Not, I, I, I'm not having this band be a band without me in it. Damn. For sure. But then once, you know, anyway, did that, that you, went did into you tour with them. I did one tour with them. Yeah. yeah. And it was like before they something. recorded Planetary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're playing like, uh, what was that one? Pestilence. and Yeah. We played yeah. like, you know, an autopsy, Pestilence. We played two songs off of Planetary. Right. And then, uh, yeah, but I don't know. It just wound up like not really working out. All right. So who's the greatest death metal live band in existence? Well, mm. live show, though. It has to be live show, none of the nerds. Well, then. Suffocation. <laughs> See, it's, my, to, me, suffocation. It's, to me, it's a debate between suffocation and dying fetus. Yeah, yeah. True. And, and I go dying fetus. Yeah, I would. I would have to see them back know, to dude. back. And I'd have know. to be Sword drunk and moshing. I don't know. I feel like the fact that they could pull it off with only three members. That's true. And you're just like, bro. And they That's all just true. jump yeah, yeah. in their van and they have room and stuff and they leave. That's so <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah, they like, have that's crazy. Yeah, they have they can room. just do it. They're just three people. That's like there's crazy. no, no one's like, all right, when are you guys adding the, the fourth person? That's no, I not a thing. need at all. They don't. I, don't yeah. I love suffocation. That's like I said earlier that, that was That's the funny first time I went to Europe thing. was with those guys. It was like the first, like, oh, my God, we're hanging out. And you're all on the bus together and shit. But yeah, yeah. It's salt dying fetus, and we toured with them. And I, yeah, I think they might be the goat. Yeah. It's one of those, two. That's funny that we were, we, we were We like all three agree on yeah, the, like, the top it's, it's two. Obviously. We drove up to Kentucky when we and saw... Uh, Suffo. Suffo. Here's one from thing here? I'll give Suffo. Yeah. Yes, from here. It was like, it's an, it's like an hour hours. and a half away, dude. It's three wow. hours. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was two or three hours. Can I at least give this one to Suffocation? They do not have their original lineup. They they have a new vocalist that's now. A, yeah, yeah, and they're tough. still one of the best. It live ripped death metal. Bands. They're still one of the best. <laughs> it's straight up best. ripped. I did not care. I've seen them with like their old school lineup. Right. And what's the old school lineup? Well, like, like I don't know if it was. Frank it wasn't like hundred oh, percent old no, school, I'm but I saw them with Kryptopsia. the drummer Mike. Okay. And Terrence, obviously. And Frank on vocals. Yeah. And then, like, Derek Boyer was on bass. Yeah. And I don't remember who was on second guitar. The guy. But I've seen them with that lineup, and I have saw them with the new one, with the new vocalist. Yeah. And granted, I was, like, moshing and drunk and crying because I was having so much fun. Yeah. But It is a good time. Uh, you know, I'm, all that to say, it was, like, sicker the, sec- the time in Kentucky. I mean, <laughs> dude, Ricky is such a sick Yeah, vocalist. I ripped it. He's so sick. Yeah, he's badass. And they I, had Kev before that. Kev was sick too. Yeah, and like oh, uh, alluvial. Yeah, really. Yeah, I'm pretty That's sure. sick. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Sick. I saw some videos with yeah. him. Yeah, I yeah. saw him at Oz, we played with him at Ozfest, and I watched him. I'm like, damn, I got sick. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. dope. And which is like, I mean, for a legacy band like that, I mean, that's yeah. like impossible to yeah. replace the vocalist. And like, uh, it was fucking he had so dude much character too. I know, yeah. but honestly, like I said, it was fucking sick, dude. And was, the drummer Eric is like the man, dude. He rules. I just re- I just remembered that the tour we did with Suffocation in Europe, Frank couldn't be there, so John Gallagher was the vocalist. No fucking yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I right. remember that. Okay. I heard about that. All right. yeah, 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 That's yeah. pretty goddamn. I heard about it. So he had no guitar. He you was saw the on best vocal. of yeah, 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 yeah. Every once in a while, I would like go, you know, like, <laughs> in the crowd, I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. So I got yeah, yeah, the I completely best. Completely forgot vocals, about it. Man. I was like, what was the lineup for that? They had um, uh, uh, oh, who's the blonde guy, the the drummer. Uh, Fuck, I forget his name. Oh, I can't remember anymore. It was not Eric. Uh, no, in suffocation. Yeah, and he was an old school drummer. Everybody's hyped that he's oh, back. Dave Cole Ross. Yeah, that, yeah that's yeah, who yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, Cephalic Carnage was also on the tour. Oh, dude. Okay. Yeah. Who else was on it? Uh, Havoc. Sick. Too. Yeah, I met that's all a these fucking sick tour. I met friends for life, like all on this one tour. I was like, oh shit. Those tours Nick, happened. Nick Zellos so was the ba- uh, bassist for Cephalic yeah, on that uh, oh, yeah? tour. Yeah, it was a good time. Nick rules. Have it's, you guys asked him to play bass with you guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I figured. Hit him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did. I'm like all up in everybody's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. Asking every, you're asking I'm everyone. Just, I just you know gotta, what they're doing. You're going to ask. You're going to ask. I just see what they're doing. I'm kind of keep up to date. Just, yeah, yeah, just of course. In case, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel sure. like people don't realize how hard it is to keep a band 
and members together oh, on yeah. the type of in the type of bands that we're in and a progressive i mean it's hard in every fucking band like people sure. don't uh, uh, people will get on the road and they just don't even like touring regardless of the touring situation that's crazy so yeah, yeah i mean <laughs> I like because i sucks. can't really gotta like it yeah. i yeah, can't yeah. relate yeah yeah. yeah, I've just learned you can't change anybody, I think. You can't make somebody motivated. You can't nope. make somebody excited. All that stuff has to be preloaded, you know what I mean? And if, yeah. and if it's not there, then maybe you shouldn't be here. And I've learned that because especially when you're, like for me, I've been in a band since I was young. So I've a, a good portion, I grew up with some of these people. And then you go your separate ways and it can be kind of, kind of hurt sometimes and you're like why don't you think the way i think why don't you yeah, want to do yeah. the things i want to do Absolutely. And, and that's just part of growing up i think you're like all right that's just what it is people are going to do what they want to yeah, do yeah, and 100%. i'm not i can't change the way you think but i can control the way i think and that's it you yeah know? the way i think is that this band is moving forward no matter what no matter what period right. yeah i know now music, bro. now yeah. we're just kind of like when people don't want to do it anymore it's like Hey man, it's, it was great. Yeah, it was it great. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> it feels good. It used though. to yeah. literally, like, it I, used to break my heart. Like yeah, it used yeah. to really hurt. And like my, I would feel like my heart was ripped out for like a month. I you feel know? you. I feel you there. But now it's like, a, dude, that's the way it goes, man. Exactly. I'm like, know, hey, you know what? All, this is a really sick touring together. And I'm sadly we won't get, we won't get to do it again, but. Yeah, or maybe it'll happen. I don't know. Yeah, depending maybe on, it depending will. on how it ends, you know. You, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is that how you like you you've kept your band going this entire time? Yeah. You're I mean, the one person who's yes. left in your band. Have you had that same experience? Like was it hard? Certain members better than others, you know, some hurt less and more, you know, some you had tension already, so you're like, Oh, it's kind of a relief, you know. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. see ya. and then certain people are like, Damn, this hurts. I can't I didn't think you were gonna leave this journey with me, you know what I mean? And it's like the initial shock is almost like, all right, I can handle this. And then you get those weird moments when you're in a venue on a different tour that you've been on with a different group of people. Like, it's weird sometimes. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? It's totally. like, well, you said you kind of like came up with Alex. So yeah, that yeah, probably, yeah. I'm assuming that sucked. Yeah, yeah. Quick. I mean, but I understood it. That one I understood. Some of them I didn't understand. Some of them I understood. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. You probably shouldn't. Uh -huh. Why should you go do your thing? You know, uh -huh. probably make you feel better as a person. A couple of people were like that, and then other people were like, "Damn, what's going on, bud?" You know. What about when Brian quit? Uh, when Brian that? quit. That was a little. That was a middle of a situation. So you know, okay. kind of like <laughs> may have been closer to like a impulse decision, I guess, than a like a. I've been thinking about this for a long time. Mm -hmm. It was kind of something came to a head. You know. Okay. You know, but a yeah. lot of things came to a head during that album. You know, like it was kind of like. We had to kind of go through that to get where we're at right now, I think. I think me, creatively, like mm -hmm. I've been I was in the band since I was like 15 or 16, writing, writing the same style. And then I think at that point, I started seeing people like kind of ripping our style and stuff. And I just kind of wanted to be like, fuck everybody. Fuck yeah, everybody yeah. that used to be in the band, all the sounds <clears throat> you're used to. And I just kind of like made my own thing. And it kind of felt really good. And people were talking shit on it, but I didn't care. Yeah. Like, I, I, mean, I, I, like, I, I we thought really like that yeah, record. Yeah, I love that. I thought the mix came out. I thought Mark nailed the mix on that one. It was the yeah. biggest, hugest sounding. And then I feel like we figured out, like I learned a lot about production on that one that I brought on to Empyrean. Like Empyrean still has that fat sound, but of yeah. course there's way more notes. And so you have to kind of handle all that or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, just, I just thought your guys' songwriting, I liked Ant's vocals. We had, I like love Ant, vocals. Ant was on our podcast I like way that. at the beginning and he yeah, brought yeah. us the Undying Light uh, You're the third vinyl. Fallujah person. Yeah. Who was the first? Andrew. Andrew. Oh, he was on that? Yeah, Andrew was like on. Like in person? Yeah, yes. in person. In Santa Cruz. Yes. In Santa Cruz. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, had. Yeah. So I think Fallujah is definitely our most interviewed. I mean, no we, we have a, yeah, yeah. Wow. Right, three, three people. Bro, you yeah. can have like two more people living next door to you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We, I know. Need, we need to have we, Kyle we on the podcast. We were like next. thinking about having you and Kyle, but then we were like, we were like, we need this. to split them up yeah, into two just, different podcasts. You I know, just sit there next time. Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, cause exactly. a problem. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we did talk about it though. We're like, well, should we have both of them? Or should we, I don't know. Spread it out. Do you get more bang for your buck? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll interrogate him pocket. next and yeah, yeah, see yeah. if you guys' stories match. You know, like a, so yeah. did you, so you, <laughs> you felt that people talked shit about Undying Light? Oh, I didn't, no, I didn't care at all. I was like, kind of was like, all right. No, I'm just fine. saying you, you <laughs> felt that people were talking shit about. Oh like, yeah. Just I think period. that, I, well, yeah, you can see it on the internet. People like, <laughs> 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 you're like, oh, yeah, I read no, the yeah, fucking comments. I read comments. the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a little different. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> that, yeah, I was used to really good reviews, you know, that's kind of, <laughs> yeah. kind of yeah, kind of like, that's what I was used to, to be honest. Oh like, uh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter what I make. People like that shit. You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. Is that what you thought going 
Not so much. I didn't care at that point. I just, yeah. I was more into like personal reasons. It was like, I really want to step away from this stuff. And I just did what I wanted. It wasn't strategic at all. It wasn't business at all. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, that's what, that's what art is. And that's what art should be is that yeah. you have the ability to do what you want and what you feel at that time. And I think that sometimes, you know, you are, there is the risk that some of your fan established fan base might not be that into it. But at the end of the day, those people, if they, you don't really want the fair weather fans, you want the people who are like, yeah. fuck, I, all right, I heard this record. Maybe I don't like this one as much, or maybe I like this one a lot, Yeah, but I'm still in it on the next one. I'm still going to listen to what comes. Rush next. fans. Yeah. Rush fans. Rush fans. Yeah. No matter what they did. No like, you know what? Rush's Every fans. album of theirs is not my favorite, but they got yeah. that one. That or I even love. Zappa. Like, the, <laughs> he, Zappa. dude, Zappa has so much fucking yeah, yeah. output that it's like some people, yeah, the Zappa. Like, you pop. hang out or don't. I don't know, you know? Like exactly. Do you want to join us or not? Yeah. I'm definitely, I think, I, I think more long term, you know? And that's kind of also, you know, we have the same manager as Black Dahlia, and that's kind of like the. Like what we talk about, like it's not really about the one album. You know what I mean? It's yeah. about creating oh, totally. a following and, 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 cr- and creating a following in multiple markets. And you know what I mean? And slowly pumping that and, and gaining trust of people. And I could slow, I see that the benefits of that over the years as opposed to just like, oh, fuck, this is not like, let's make a Lorna Shore album this year. And the next year, yeah, the fuck yeah. is right. that, you know, fuck all that. You well, know? you see how like yeah. bands who like certain bands, they'll come out like following a, the gimmick of the time and they'll yeah. kind of blow up right then, which but sick, three yeah, years, cool. th- which is great. But three years later, no one really gives a fuck about them anymore because they're kind of like a product of the time. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I view your band, you guys are like more of a, it's like a spanning band. I view a lot of like the, the tech prog scene as being like that. It's like, it's not necessarily music that's going to catch on right away, but it's music that over the years garners a huge, like a great fan base and fans who are way into every album. And it's yeah. not just based on like a vocal style, like a crazy vocal or right. not to say that any of those bands like dude, Lorna's killing it. Yeah, They're going to have a career forever. I'm so stoked. happy for yeah, them. It'll help all of us out too. Dude. I mean the ships rise with the tide, right? Yes, sir. That's how I've always yes, looked at it. It's like, cause we just, did a few Christmas shows with yeah. Lorna and it was like a ton of those people. They were sick too. They were fucking oh, yeah. great. They fucking sounded They were dope, fucking dude. great. Oh, yeah. They sounded great. But, but they're I'll, not like copying anyone. It's like they are just doing their thing and everyone's copying them. So right, right, yeah, right. the jokes on the people who are the cop, the copycats. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like for them, they're, they're doing their thing. And it's mm-hmm. like, totally. you know, that that's something that we talk about all the time. It's like, dude, to when you hear newer bands, you know, yeah. and it's like, dude, you don't need to be them. Like, just do yeah. your thing. Like, there's already that band. Or I yeah. feel like... Whatever are, that band might be. There are a lot know? of bands now who, like, they're trying to get big off, like, the TikTok breakdown thing. Oh, wow. Whereas I'm like... <laughs> Sounds miserable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, you know, I don't know how much, like, lasting value this has. Yeah. I don't know if it's, like, good songwriting. Yeah. So I think that what you're talking about that's the important thing that we are in total agreement with that like the building a career over time is much different than like adhering to a sound of the time and trying to like have a career based on that yeah it's like those moments where you play shows and you meet people and you're slowly building connections you know and just like constantly putting on a good impression or whatever totally and just having like a good time doing it yeah, that's like my whole thing. I talk about it all, all the time, especially on the podcast. Like I'm 38. I've been touring since I, I've been touring for like 20 years, yeah. you know, and like being in bands and I've been associated with bands that are really sick, but I've never gone into it thinking like, I'm going to fucking go network with all these bands and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I've always just been real. You yeah. know, and I feel like so many people that started touring with me, like they're all gone. And it's like Ugh. all like all the bands that Animosity used to tour with and stuff, like most of them are all gone. Yeah, you're and right. it's because we just like did our own thing. And like the only thing I've ever done is just do what I think is cool. And because sometimes people ask, you know, like, oh, how did you get like these studio gigs? Like you know, playing for like Whitechapel or Machine sure. Head or whatever. And it's like, Honestly, just being a chill dude and yeah. just being around. Yeah. That's literally it. Yeah, dude. You know, I'm not like, that's all I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just, I meet people. I'm fucking cool with them or I'm a fan. And like, you know, if I meet bands that I'm a fan of, I'm not afraid to give it up and be like, dude, I fucking love your band. You're the shit, you know? And like, I've just always been like that. Yeah. And 
you know, that's been the one thing that's like kept me like relevant, I guess. You know, you know what I mean? Sure. And, and, I, and yeah, it's not like you're trying to get in other people's business. You're just grinding, you're doing your own work <laughs> and you build your own world. And I think people will watch that. You yeah. Know, that's what I've kind of, that's what I've kind of learned over the last 10 years of trying with different albums, trying toward you try to get into different groups or whatever. It, it always, it's always better off if you just do your own thing and keep working, working yeah. hard on your albums, or your totally. videos, your streams or whatever it is. And people will notice and they'll respect that. And you'll get gigs. And that's what I tell my students. That's <clears> half of the question. How do I get into it? How do I get, yeah. how do I get into it? I'm like, just make music, you know, yeah. just, like do your own thing. People, Have fun. You'll find musicians. Like you can't find musicians like being like, yeah, it's going to be real sick. You know, like yeah. hey, you got to have some stuff already established, you know, like totally. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree. And like, I haven't, um, yeah, I guess it's just enjoy the fucking ride, man. Yeah. You know, have fun and be a fan. Like, I think that's also really helps. I think when people are too caught up with just trying to get people to listen to their band. Sure. And I, and I feel like uh, this happens with more people that are like our age and they've been in bands for a long time. They kind of grow out of like being a fan, you know? And like yeah. for me, it's important to always be a fan. And, oh, and, yeah. and I've gone through pa- periods in my life where I'm just kind of like, oh, whatever, dude, fuck it, I don't need to hear this metal shit, you know, like yeah. that kind of a vibe. But it's like, it's so much more fun when you're like hype on some new metal. Dude, right. And there's... Like, so much sick metal now, you know? Like, I can't yeah. even keep track of it all. Yeah, dude, I, I feel you. Like, uh, before the pandemic, I honestly had, I, I think I, you were describing me, I kind of felt like I'd grown, grown out of it, you know what I mean? It was yeah, like, I totally. was like, I play metal, and I go on tour with metal bands and stuff when I'm trying to find all this weird stuff, and I wasn't really listening to it, and I wasn't doing any of this stuff or whatever. Yeah. And then the pandemic happened, and we started streaming, so I was like, well, I'm just going to learn cool songs and i was like damn i love decapitated like, <laughs> yeah. like i actually love it way more than all this stuff that i've been trying to listen to the last four or five years like this stuff's kind of whack compared to decapitated totally I'm, like, I'm back you know what i mean exactly like, and that yeah, that, yeah. that i'm back feeling yeah, 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 i like yeah. love that feeling yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. it kind of happened to me during the pandemic okay. as well like i kind of just had a lot of time mm-hmm. and i was like fuck it i'm just gonna like just get into metal again yeah and that and i started learning like how to do doubles on the kick and like you know go faster and fucking uh just list just pay attention to like what's out there you know what i mean be open-minded yeah totally Totally. Uh, because like i said people that are kind of like late later 30s they've been in a band for a long time they're kind of just not really you can get jaded and i guess i kind of did like like when I was in animosity, I was pretty much like, dude, metal's stupid. You know, and like just listening to like, you it know, sounds other, like a band that would yeah, think that. Yeah. You know, sick and weird. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, you I mean, <laughs> and that's, that also has, it has its place. Like, obviously you got to go find other stuff for sure. Yeah. But for us, I mean, we play metal, so it's like, come back, you know, like be, yeah. uh, be a fan. Like Chain and I go to shows all, all the time. Like when a metal show comes through here, it's like, we're going, yeah. you know, and it's fu- yeah. a fucking good time. And that like reminds me of why i do this yeah absolutely you know? yeah, like connection. none of us thought that we were going to be rich and famous playing death metal like come on sure. dude be give nice, me a though. break let's make it happen though <laughs> yeah it'd be nice <laughs> i mean let's speaking try. of uh, dr- let's what, try, what are they called sure. uh, subs and hype trains into our <laughs> twitch chat <laughs> what'd, yeah, you like, say? what'd you say what? let's <laughs> so speaking of being rich drop those subs the and, oh, yeah. hype trains. let me text i haven't been looking at the chat for any <laughs> no, but i mean i haven't really okay obviously drop a let's, in the chat. let's try it you know but what like, I, you know what we got I into it Come on, we we didn't think that we were going to be something right. no, that no, I no. think Way happens. More. Also. I would have gone to college, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, no shit. Something yeah. that I think also happens is like with a band like Lorna Shore. Back in the day, it was with JFAC. Like, yeah, yeah old yeah. heads get jealous of the popularity of a band, and they because of that, they just don't want to pay attention to sure. that band at all. Whereas I think that there's something to be learned from those bands. Like, if a band is getting super popular, pay it. Pay attention oh, yeah. to what yeah, they're yeah. doing. To learn something. From Thousand them. percent. Yeah, try to learn something like, from like, them. Yeah. Why are they getting so big? What could you do to like alter what's going on with your band? Because there actually is room for everyone, especially with the internet. It's like, dude, bands a, a band's discography usually won't even last six hours. It's six hours of mm. time. So right after that discography, they're going to move on to another band. Yeah. You want your band to be the band they move on to. Like, right, you right, know, right. figure out how to how to dial into that shit instead of becoming jealous. I think that there's something to be learned from 
totally. bands who. Well, that's what's pop cool about off. what you're doing. You know, you're like, oh, what's this Twitch thing? Like, you know, let me oh, yeah. figure this out. Let me so get on. I figured it out. Yeah, bro. and like, you, you, you know, you could have been like, oh, Twitch is stupid for, yeah. you know, uh, what are they called? Gen Z's or whatever, you know, and like Dude, yeah. been over it, but you made it into your own thing. And like, yeah. that's, I mean, I, I just think there's so much cool shit out there. Like there, like there's no reason to turn it all down. Right. I had to go, I had to figure it out though. You know, cause I was like that. I was like, I should be able to just go on tour and come home and everything should be sick. Yeah. And yeah. Like, totally. That's what we all a, did. I not do it. enough, you know, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> God damn, we're so, but no, you gotta, you gotta play the game or we're put out videos, connect with people and, you know, so. Totally. Well, yeah. You also yeah, yeah. learn. Then you start to learn that like everyone in every band that you ever loved has a day job, or they're doing they're doing something that's supplemental. Yeah. To help with the tour thing, most of the time. Mostly, yeah. You yeah. know, it's yeah. like, so why not make the external work be like doing Twitch? That's what I. That was my thought process. <laughs> I'm like, I, I spend hours and hours a day working on guitar when nobody sees it, and I'm like, damn, <laughs> like can I like capitalize this on somehow? You know what I mean? So yeah, that was the whole idea. So. When did you start doing Twitch? It was probably like I th when the pandemic hit, I was like, fine, I'm just going to teach guitar lessons and make uh, build a YouTube channel. So I did that for for like maybe six months or something like that or seven months. And then I just uh, Andrew was already on Twitch. I was like, oh, I'll give Twitch a shot as just so I can talk to some homies that comment on my Instagram. Like there's the same people are always commenting on my Instagram and my Facebook videos. How about we just all come and hang out on Twitch and you guys can ask guitar questions and Started like that and then just got sillier and more silly and just hilarious. Like it, I started adding like a green screen background and that that became like a thing we could express ourselves with all the different animes I like yeah. going on in the background, all the different songs they're requesting. And then eventually. And then a glouch. Yeah. And then a glouch. And then we did, uh, <laughs> then we started doing like challenges. You know what I mean? I did the hot ones challenge. Uh, a couple I times. watched that. Oh yeah. That was oh yeah. Silly. We did I watch. That. I think that was the first time we watched your Twitch. It was no, you in Asia, yeah, right? You, got to you were at work. Awesome. You were at work. I watched some of it though. Oh, at work. Yeah. Okay. Cause I was home like on Friday when we lived in Santa Cruz, Cheney used to work on Friday nights. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So I would just like chill and like play guitar or sure. whatever, screw around. And then you posted like, yeah, I'm going to do this hot one. So I'm like, yeah. I'm going to watch it. And yeah, I chilled yeah. and watched like the whole thing. Dude, it's sick. Yeah. yeah. I still got to post it. It's still hiding, but it's earlier on. Yeah. yeah. It, that was a good time. It was, it was good. To no, get it was sick. Wife involved. That's all. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I know. I thought that was cool. And she did a good job. Like, being on camera and stuff. Oh yeah, she's yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah, I think we did uh, we did a Mashuga full Obzen playthrough. That was fun. And then we did a Dreamless. But now it's like, I that. now it's the, the Guitar Olympics over here. Yeah, yeah. Know, so so in my opinion, like if I had to do that, I would want. I don't know. It would be. How do you learn all that shit? Because uh, for secrets. me, I'd be like, I have dude. Some I can't fucking learn all this shit. Are you yeah, kidding I know. me? It no. seems a little overwhelming when I see yeah. you. Like one day you're learning this riff and then you're learning that riff and then you're writing yeah. Fallujah. I'm like, fuck, dude, that yeah. seems like a lot. Yeah, like for me, it'd be like, that's my, f like, that's all I'm doing. Like, Damn, shout ever. out Des Moines in the chat. Sorry, I had to just that's interrupt That's all I'm doing for ever. That. You know, like. <laughs> there are very few of us challenge. out there. Like if I had to learn a, a Obzen, it was a challenge I'd be like, all right, sure. I'm, I'm, that's going to take me a month yeah, and yeah. that's all I'm going to do every single day. Well, yeah, I mean, I just did it slowly. Like, I think it's like, like for that one was easy because it was like first day, first I learned bleed. Like, all right, I could play bleed for you anytime you ask. Then it was Lethargica and then it was Obsen. And then all of a sudden it was like, if I learn four more songs, I'll know the whole album. And then I basically, me and Sam, so this is a secret, people don't know this, but I programmed the whole, I got all the tabs ready for the album, had somebody help me or whatever. And most of them were done because I'd be learning them and editing them or whatever. And then I had it set up where while I was playing it, there was a giant TV in front of me that was had a video of the tabs going by. So I was so I'm like, then was, I did, I'm like wow. this, and the tabs are right in front of me, like zero 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 zero. Oh my god! So like some songs I knew, and then like those other four or five teleprompter, then, dude. Let's then, go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then honestly, like when I play uh, dying, well, certain songs I know, like I know a lot of um, like uh, dying fetus songs just by heart, but some of the new ones they don't go into that deeper part of the brain. So I'll just. Guitar Pro 8 is dope because you could have a track go with it. So you could press yeah. play on Guitar Pro 8. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what chord's next. And you see it. Oh, that's what's next. Okay. So you run the GP. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. some of that stuff, like like playing faceless songs, the, 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 there's no use. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you got to know, know that shit. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. so many sure. notes going on. But like if someone to request uh, Gojira or Devin Townsend or 
you know, some of that stuff, I could just pull up the tab and sight read it. You know, it's like, wait, so there are they requesting and then you're literally just playing it right as they request? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I have like this huge playlist of all the songs I've learned over the last three years. So some of them are like okay. vaguely in my memory. And then and then we fill up the rest of it with if, you, you know, if you if I don't know how to play it, I'll just improvise over it. You know, because I've kind of gotten good at that over the last couple of years. So, totally. So. Yeah. It must have made you like a way sicker guitar. Player. I think so. Yeah. yeah it like yeah, had to yeah. have. just because you're playing it like that. Amount every day. of guitar. Yeah, every day. Yeah, stronger That's for sure. Yeah. Fucking awesome. It's the improv that I think that I like today. I, I, you know, I have this like long list of songs that I jam to, and it's usually just like, hey, keep request, like send me a song you want me to play over. And if it sounds good, I was like, well, that was a dope one. I'll put it in this playlist. And there's a couple songs that I would avoid because they were really, really fast. And I hit them today, and I was like, that wasn't shit. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. It's cool. I tell that to. All of my musician friends. I mean, I told you, remember? I was like, bro, get on Twitch, get on Twitch. Come on, Yeah, I'm man. too lazy for that. Dude. Yeah, He's yeah. trying. Well, you got yeah. on Twitch. I mean, you figure out your how you did your thing. But, you know, all my friends during the pandemic, like, do this, man. You'll be playing. Yeah, you'll yeah. be interacting with your people, you know? like, yeah. Dude, that's what I, I try, I've tried to do that with a bunch of my friends with TikTok. And it's like you can lead a horse to water, that's but it. you can't make them drink, dude. You can't change somebody's Yeah, mind. yeah, you, yeah, can. yeah. you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like taking advantage of all that stuff has been huge. Like for us, like for our band, like dude. I mean, I mean, TikTok changed the game for us. It oh, made yeah. like our it, band effectively started in right, twenty twenty. Shout out, dog. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I mean, what's that? What is yeah. life? That's you know? so <laughs> epic. But that so yeah, if like, we had been like, oh, we're too cool to post videos on TikTok. Yeah, not there's no Drake sh- shout out. You no, know, you know what idea, I learned yeah. back in the day when people started doing playthrough videos. There was a there was a clear division between people who are willing to do playthroughs and people who yeah. are like that is whack i'm never fucking filming yeah, yeah. myself on camera playing this You're the people who did now. do it look at yeah, yeah. Al- everyone yeah. knew who alex was like alex rudinger way oh, yeah, yeah. early well, on you know the people high who, quality too though yeah, dude yeah. yeah good quality but the people who adapt to that stuff like it's better to adapt than if you can't beat them join them and most yes. of the time you aren't going to beat them when it comes to the internet yeah so yeah i mean but uh, yeah, you say that, but I was totally that um, jaded person for sure. Dude, I think. Same, luckily, same. I, luckily, I think I started this when I was young and I was able to go through that cycle of understanding the value in certain things. And, you know, and I was totally the one too. I'd be like 23 or whatever. And you see your homie's band blow up. And you're like, what the fuck, dude? Like, <laughs> And now I'm like, dude, that's sick, man. That's great. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. You should be happy because you'll see your friends succeed and fail all the time, you know? So it's like, we should be happy when they succeed for sure. But, but also be jelly. there be there for them if it's a fail. Yeah, yeah. Know? Like, I'm still going to support you, man. Yeah, it's still my... Dude, so many friends. I remember all the homies that talk shit on Undying Light. I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't remember, dog. <laughs> They're actually listed. So, uh, I got my so, nice so list going. <laughs> list, it, list in the description, by the way. Well, so going out, <laughs> g- coming out of that record, yeah, like, yeah. how did you feel about writing the next record? Were you like, oh, okay, I'm so not going to do that again? Like, I'm uh, not going to write... No, it wasn't like, oh, that was a mistake. It was like, uh, all right, you want to hear some crazy shit? Fine, I will make that for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what that album was. <laughs> it's it's a fucking sick record. Thanks, so dude. was who was like involved in the process? Were the songs written when Kyle joined the band? And uh, when Evan? Pretty much. That's what's cool about this new album is, is that Kyle has been involved from the beginning. It's like apparent. And Sam, too. They got this other guitar player. So I'm not used to having another guitar player work with me. And so that was cool. He's put some songs, but that that last one basically by myself, pretty much. It was oh, pr- sure. pretty miserable. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. And luckily we had the pandemic, but uh, yeah, I tracked every single, every single note that his guitar is on that record for that one. Mm-hmm. Wow, Good God, that took so. So long. Sam is All tracking guitar too. Yeah. Okay. We got him set up with an Apollo. Okay. So oh, yeah. first time, I'm hoping this goes well, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, See what happens. Nice to not have to do every single note or whatever. You get it back, and it's like buzzing <laughs> no i checked it out <laughs> yeah, like, send me those lines no, he sent before it to you me last anything. night and there were some problems and then we fixed them and i was like it's good to go now it's like me just being like i'm very particular about how the chugs resonate you know what i mean i had to send him examples it's like you gotta get like this you should send them epitaph <laughs> yeah 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 Dude, make that yeah, 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 yeah. No, <laughs> actually, that's like actually this. how i found sam is because i asked wes hauck a can, you don't know any guitar players? And you're like, you should check this guy out. And he has a full cover of Epitaph on his YouTube page. Oh, damn. I was like, that'll do it. And that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> he's a sick guitar player. He's uh, it, very sick. He's if you have a cover player. of that, you're just good to go. Yeah, you're, 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 you're in the in. band. Yeah, yeah, you're in you're the band. In. So for <laughs> anyone out there listening, <laughs> just go and do a cover of Epitaph. And we're Actually, all going to look at your playing. You should probably have like Stab Wound 
on your YouTube. You have to. Yeah. And then I'd say probably have a faceless. Okay, song. wait, Rob. You know we were yeah. no the three of us were supposed to do a I'm necrophagist waiting. cover with Dean Lamb. You know, you know I already turned mine in. It's I like no way. started it's learning the drums oh, and I was even... just kind of like this. No, <laughs> Naveen is I, the hard one to convince like, here. But it's I'm a, it's supposed this. to well, be the three of us and Dean and Jared. That's what he said. I, yeah. I kept it a secret till now, but there you oh, go. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I just spilled it. No, no, spill it because then it will happen. Yeah. Now everyone needs to harass Naveen to do this. It's just the drums on that album are just so They're stupid absurd. the vocals yeah, are like, so goddamn easy uh, that it's sucks. like it's that doesn't just, sound fun that <laughs> yeah the drums like if i could just part. do my own thing then i'm down all right like just let me do what i would do we can cover a dying fetus song that'd be way more fun <laughs> yeah that would <laughs> that'd be a lot easier yeah, yeah. dude I, I that's how we did like a one like one minute of a dying fetus song i remember that yeah and they posted it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and they that posted it which was super sick well that was like I one prayed. of the coolest moments of my life i was like really dying <clears throat> fetus reposted our video so that was dude. honestly no, just like drake but yeah dying fetus, yeah drake you know? uh, <laughs> fetus, i was though. like making so at that time i was like kind of more posting reg regularly on my instagram sure. And I was like, oh, I'll just, I was like, I haven't really done any covers. I was like, I'll just do like a Dying Fetus song. And then I was like, I went to Spotify and I'm like, I'm just going to do the one that has the most plays. Yeah, okay. And it was that song. <laughs> Which is a uh, uh, subject to a beat. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And dude, I was like, I did the drum portion. And then I was like, man, this is so sick. I'm like, I got to do the, the guitar too. <laughs> and then it was so sick and so fun that I was like, all right. Chaney, you have to do vocals on this oh, yeah. because it is so <laughs> sick. And then, so yeah, of course she did it, and they reposted it, which was like, I'm like, dude, yeah, yes. that's next level. We did it, <laughs> yeah, because they're actually the one band that I don't know. Yeah, we've never met. Yeah, them. Yeah, they're one oh, of really? the bands that I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that's them. Kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, I've yeah. met John Gallagher. Like, Animosity played with them. I mean, like back in the day, oh, really? and it was Animosity. So, I've it was, never and met I them. met John, and like I'm, you know, met some other people in the band, but like I really don't know them. Oh wow. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time Which is with weird. him, actually. Have yeah. you spent time with long-haired John? No. I, well, I saw him at... Um, uh, <laughs> it's uh, almost like meeting a new person. What was that it's one? Plot twist. <laughs> that one, uh, the American tour, Chaos and Carnage. That's when uh, I saw him. I was oh, like, yeah, damn, yeah. what's with the hair? And I was just roasting him because he had this crazy... Uh, <laughs> He has like his cab set off to the side of the stage with like a mic and like all yeah. that. I'm like, just get a camper, man. It's like, wait, what? Do what does he have going like, on? Like, he had this guitar Dude, set but up. He has where to his roll cab, the ampeg. I don't. Does know. he still rip the ampeg? I don't think so. I, I thought it was a 5150 or a 5153L34 something or or no, one of those. It was a PV, I think. But he had a, he had a PV and a cab okay. set up on the side of the stage with an isolated mic box. It just looked absurd. I was yeah, like, this yeah. is silly. But then, also, it's like, dude, you're dying fetus. Just rip it, <laughs> bro. It, your camper tone will sound great. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, yeah. nobody will care. Oh, yeah. Just put a fake amp up front. If, I mean, is that yeah. what you play? You play camper? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Why? Do, what is is it that you prefer that to Axe Effects? What is the uh, I'm not going to knock Axe Effects. I don't have an Axe Effects, mm -hmm. but uh, the, especially not the third one or whatever. Or are you endorsed by Kemper? No, oh, no okay. they don't really hand it. I mean, I got an artist deal, but they're not like that. I mean, they got Taylor yeah. Swift's guitar That's player what playing. Axe is like. You can't get like a deal. Everybody wants it, so why would they yeah. need to like, hook it up? It, yeah, totally. Like, That's how, like, I need a car endorsement too, man. It like, would <laughs> be sick. Like, a yeah. Porsche yeah, endorsement. Yeah, yeah. Imagine, man. <laughs> Tesla. Like, or computers. Tosin said that uh, Steve Vai bought his Axe Effects. Well, wow! Fuck you. Yeah. So <laughs> they're not damn. endorsing people yeah. straight up. It's not but, a thing. Uh, I like the camper because at the time it was the best sounding thing, and then it's got all my profiles. Like I made all the pro like it's got my exact profiles I made, you know, from the albums and stuff. And I don't know, it's what I'm used to. Yeah, but, totally. But it sounds good. It sounds really good. At it does. You have great live tone. Oh, thank you. Sounds really good. Hell yeah. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. I don't know. Yeah. We got to play cares? a show together sometime. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, we've, we've, never, ne we've never we played, played a show together. We played um, uh, Two the Masquerade. Two separate rooms, yeah. Remember? Yeah, 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 of course. And you guys that. were across. Yeah, yeah. And we've talked about it with Brian. I think Brian was in Fallujah at that time. And, yeah, I think so. That was... Uh, you guys were on the Black Dahlia tour. Yeah. That's what it was. And we yeah. were playing with the Contortionist. Oh, the band's sick. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. See Last I mean, Chance of Reasons coming back. Yeah, I heard that. that. I yeah. I had that song a couple of days before it came out. We like, should listen to that song actually in the post show. Oh, yeah, I don't have listened to it yet. That's one. Yeah. Yeah, I love both of those bands. A uh, Last Chance was actually so the first show that I ever saw uh, when I moved to Santa Cruz was Last Chance to Reason and Continuum with Chase. Oh, I saw that show. Uh, were you in Santa Cruz at that show? No, it was the DNA Lounge where I saw it. Oh shit. Okay, yeah, so it yeah, must yeah. have been back to back nights. Yeah. But yeah. 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 Yeah, that was the first show I ever saw in Santa Cruz. And then we did uh, 
I did merch for animals as leaders when Last Chance and Intronaut and Dead Letter Circus opened. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah so it was like, dude, Last Chance. They're awesome. I prefer Michael Lassard's vocals in Last Chance than Contortions. Not that Contortions is not an amazing band, but man, he actually belts out in, in uh, level two and shit. Oh, dude. I yeah. remember he's got that like pterodactyl scream thing that he does, and he would do it live every night with Last Chance. And I was just like, I just remember watching that band, and I'm like, fuck this vocal, because I'm always paying attention to the vocalist. Sure, That's yeah, yeah. where I'm paying attention. It was just like, this guy's going somewhere. People are going to know this guy's name because it was before he had joined the contortionist. It yeah. was before anyone knew who Last Chance was really, yeah. you know? I felt the same way. I watched him and I was like, whoa, that was totally caught my attention. Yeah, it was mind set. blowing. Yeah. So totally sick. mind blowing. And Intronaut, I mean, dude, that's one of my favorite bands. For real? That's one oh. of my favorite bands too. Really? Yeah, big time. That's like probably one of the reasons why Undying Light sounds the way it does is like that and Smashing Pumpkins. That actually makes a lot of sense. Habitual Levitation. my favorite. Dude. I was all over so that good. shit all day. We did a tour with Intronaut, one of our, I think like in 2016. One of our earlier yeah, tours. one of our earlier tours. And, really? You know, we did that. Before the Animals tour, I hadn't heard of Intronaut, but seeing them live every night, it's just like, oh my God. And they have like the the two vocals yeah. th thing. Joe doesn't really, Joe doesn't do vocals. No. But uh, Sasha and Dave doing vocals, I just loved the, they have the whole like man singing thing. Yeah, just but it's like lethargic and kind of sad and like. I love that. Yeah, it's my favorite kind of vocals. It's almost shoegazy, you know. like Dude, shoegaze yeah, type shit is yeah. like what I, I, that's where I really? listen Me too. to. Really, too. Yeah, that shit. Yeah. Death and, Heaven. And, yeah, you fuck yeah. With. Well, we, we grew up knowing those guys. Rob used to be in a band with those dudes and. Uh, they used to be called Rise of Caligula, actually. And then Rob quit Rise of Caligula and took the van <laughs> from them. And we <laughs> crashed that van in, in uh, February. Oh, <laughs> damn. 2012. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. And then they're like, fuck you guys. We're going to form a band called Def Evan. And I was like, eh, no one's going to care. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Apple will definitely not put you on the yeah. commercial. Yeah, that that won't happen. Uh, the Sunbather was on it. But yeah, it was um, George and uh, the other guy. Dan, the drummer. I don't know, Dan, but the guitar player, He's Gary. From Gary was around, like hanging out at Rob's house when we were making our first album. I remember we just hung around. But really? He, but he wasn't really. Okay. Yeah. Well, that dude, the drummer, the Dan, is from. Uh, I never met. Yeah. Like Danville area. Oh, yeah? yeah. yeah. Dan Andrew. from Dan. Dan. Yeah, yeah. Wait, is, uh, didn't he try out for Flesh Rot? Yeah, I like jam with him one night. Oh, no way. Yeah. What's his last name? Uh, I can't remember. Oh. Uh, yeah. I never met the. Yeah. yeah. He's a sick drummer, though. Not and, Walker. Like, we're talking, no. we were talking about intro now when you're in the bathroom. Dan oh, yeah. Walker. No, I heard that. I, I love these fucking yeah. drums, yeah. man. Oh, I know. Sick. Super sick. Yeah. They, they, they don't really play anymore, right? I, mean, I don't think not so. Not that I've seen. I think I would have seen. They have that album that came out like in 2020, maybe. Oh, the one that Alex uh, played on. Yeah. And uh, Devin Townsend mixed. Yeah. Yes. I was like yeah, going to play on that. Really? <laughs> and then it just came out and Alex was on it. Like, who can't find Alex? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Alex played on it. Yeah, 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 that was a really good one. Yeah, Alex so, played on it. I mean, right. all Intronaut is really good. I hope they continue making music, or you know, yeah, they're. I think Sasha's just like kind of killing it with uh, his guitar. Yeah, the yeah. Oh yeah, guitars. have you played his guitars? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've played them. We went to, I went to his shop and checked them out. I mean, it's completely different style. I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. shred on him, but yeah, like you know. They're yeah, they're sick, high quality. It's for doing like man metal. Yeah, man metal. Emma, Emma Ruth <laughs> Rundle. I'm into the boys. Dude, here. Sasha <laughs> got put on the map to me when Emma Ruth Rundle played one of his guitars. I was like, Was that? Yeah, you're right. Uh, Emma Ruth Rundle is a, sh it's kind of in the same vein as Chelsea Wolf, I would say. Okay, all right. Uh, but Emma Ruth Rundle is one of my favorite artists. So Chaney, what's that favorite. kind of music called? I, it would exist. It's yeah. like sad. That's what I it's call like it. sad girl <laughs> yeah. shoegaze. That's what I, I call it sad, sad girl, girl music, but yeah. that's probably not what it's called. Well, what, do you, <laughs> have you ever listened to Chelsea Wolf? I have. Yeah. yeah. What would you call Chelsea Wolf? Uh, I mean, she. Like, I don't know. Like indie. She rock, floats all over the map. Music. Like live in a thing. cabin music. Like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's kind of like, that's I like where I exist. That's where I exist. Yeah. Live in a cabin. Kind of makes sense. Type of music. It's like you get your edge. You know. That's where I get my edge. Yes. Yes. It's fog, mist fog music. music. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. right now my my phone. whole playlist is just really hitting with this winter outside. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Lots of black metal lately with yeah. the oh, winter. Yeah, yeah. I've been posting like stories of like 
What, did you see the one with a deer covered in snow with a Gorgoroth? <laughs> it's like no, you have a deer covered in snow. Well, there was like deers, where there was a deer sleeping in my backyard covered in snow, and I just posted Aww. a story with Gorgoroth over it, and it just it was sick. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, yeah I know. So, are you like way into black metal? That's your not like way into it, but I guess there was a time where I was exploring around. I'd yeah. have to think about it. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. But yeah, I like it. It's a great sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. super I agree. atmosphere. I remember Wolves in the Throne Room. That's not really the most like true whatever but when that came out i was obsessed i was like yeah this is so sick yeah, yeah they're sick yeah they're very sick yeah and also black metal has gone like this weird way where some of the some black metal like isn't even black metal now you know what i mean it's like, like industrial more or, yeah. Yeah, yeah i see that yeah yeah, yeah. i like I, that type of shit i don't know i've been lately i've been into more of like city pop makes me excited you ever heard of city pop japanese city pop no i knew it was japanese i've heard of it but it's so fucking good like the chord progressions are just they're just crazy it's so nostalgic you kind of like kind of like yeah i think i know what you're talking about is it yeah. like uh fuck. i'm thinking of this one band. with that 80s band yeah that Rainin's way into i don't yeah, think it's like that them? okay I, I don't know. know. I don't know. There's a bunch of them, obviously, but the guy who really is the goat, he's like the Michael Jackson, is um, uh, Tatsuro Yamashita, and he's just like, his music is so good. And I, I'm pretty sure, like, if you're into the old school, like, Zelda games and Mario games, like, it's, yeah, yeah. it's proven that the, the guy who was composing the music was straight up plagiarizing Tatsuro's melodies and stuff. So, like, the Fairy Fountain in Zelda is straight up a Tatsuro song, uh, the... The flying level in Mario, that's a, 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 a city pop song by a band called Piper or or Summer Breeze, Piper or whatever. And it's so like, I don't know what these like Japanese dudes back in the 80s like had hella pressure on them. Like, get us the soundtrack tomorrow. And they're just like yeah. just ripping off all the, the city pop around them. But when you listen to it, it's like I grew up playing video games. So it's like nostalgic. And then I think something about Japanese musicians, they have like a, a classical influence mixed with fusion and jazz influence. So it's very unique sounding to me in my ear and okay. I fucking love it. So I good. heard this one. Well, that's I cool. think it's called like Cassiopeia. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Cassiopeia. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. One of my, Are uh, they city pop? That's one of my requests that I okay, get on yeah, yeah. Uh, Twitch. Yeah. That one's I, it's, actually. It's more funk, I think. Okay. More, yeah, it's not. City pop has a very distinct sound. I, I could send it to you, you know, but it's well, basically. We'll play some in the push -up. It's basically all just a rip off of this original artist, Tatsu. Tatsuro Yamashita is okay. so sick. Oh, my God. And his music is not awesome. available on Spotify. You, people upload it on YouTube. And to get his CDs, it's like a 100 something dollars. It's like you don't care about anybody hearing it, but everybody loves it. It's, okay. a, weird, it's a weird one. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, if we, were to play it, if we were to play it for people, we'd have to find it on YouTube, I think. Sick. Okay. So we can't add it to our Spotify A lot playlist. of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty whack. But there's some I have tons of great city pop artists that are on uh uh, Spotify. I don't want to hear all these posers, dude. They you are posers. Yeah, we're going straight to the source. It's too. good, but they're posers. <laughs> well, it's like how it's, it's true. A lot of the stuff that we listen to, like Naveen and I are both very into like French, uh, I would call it like instrumental. Uh, it could score a movie. It's like movie score music, but a lot of it is kind of a copy of Elaine Grigar, who is Fantastic Planet, who did the Fantastic oh, Planet uh, I don't know if I'm soundtrack. Familiar. Dude, you might really, really enjoy it. Mm, we'll play you that. some. It's yeah, just, it's, good. have you ever heard of Air? Uh, maybe, I mean. It's like <laughs> really downtrodden light rock. Huh. Yeah. But with really cool chord Insanely progressions. Insanely good chord progressions. Yeah. Maybe I know. <clears throat> yeah, Not it's like. Me now. But, uh, you know, a lot of that shit is just copies of really old, cool old school stuff and people are just doing kind of it psychedelic over over. i guess yeah it's it is yeah. it's like psychedelic uh synth pop it's like i'm gonna play drums stuff. but i'm just gonna like barely like hit them all right <laughs> <laughs> create a vibe yeah drag and stuff yeah totally so do you feel like city pop is or what's influencing the new fallujah record uh it's funny you say that the, the what we were talking about today that like 2006 to 2009 okay. era of music <laughs> I'm like, loving that. like really dense music that has like like that's what me and the band just keep saying like we it has to be dense like every decision when it comes to like the song writing is like like ah, that's not dense enough you know what I mean we want like a shorter album that feels like whoa that was crazy you know what I mean okay and I'll show you guys I can't soon. wait to hear it I'll oh, show yeah, you I'm we're gonna play the whole thing in the post show actually yeah, post -show. yeah let's go <laughs> everybody show up <laughs> But no, you know, like, like, how, like, how do you get away with less, you know, like, how, like, how can I get a three or four minute song with like tons and tons of like moments in it? You know what I mean? And not dwell on too many parts. 
We still have like two songs that dwell on stuff. Just yeah, yeah. That dynamic. That's cool. I'm fucking excited to hear that. But yeah, just so much guitar work and lots of cool vocals. Like Kyle being involved from the beginning, he's able to been he's been able to be really creative as opposed to me being like, all right, this section you could do something cool on it. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. As a vocalist, like hearing that he came in after uh, the stuff was written, that would be really hard because there are a lot of things with. Naveen where I'm like dude you this needs to be calmed down a bit sure, yeah, yeah. so that I can like so that vocals because vocals I personally think when you're writing a song that is a focal point you know yeah, vocals I th- I lyrics so melody all of that stuff is a focal point so if there have been points where like with having Naveen and Evan mm-hmm. in a band together it's like a lot of musicality and yeah. then when I come in to write vocals I'm like well where do I really fit into this equation right. so I need to be there from the beginning so that I can kind of drive where certain things go you know if a part if I want it to be like a little less musical so sure. that it can be a vocally emphasized so I'm sure now it's probably an easier and more immersive process for him yeah, I think it is. You know, he'll just have like these ideas and I'll I'll be like, all right, I'll make a part for you. you know, yeah. Like it's opposed to just like, oh, I'm alone here. Like, like I'll take any inspiration I can get. So if he's like, yo, I thought it'd be cool if we had this moment, you know, like he did a tour with, uh, he was singing for Rivers. And then oh, yeah, we saw him. Yeah. Then he's, mm-hmm. he's, you know, he's with Between the Bird and Me. He's like, bro, they have this such a sick moment. This is such a cool thing. And I was like, all right, I'll make something like that. And, you know, it's like. And then I make it and then he comes back because he's inspired. It's like comes out way cooler than just like, hey, can you make something good that sounds like the previous vocalist? Like, you know. Yeah. I think the last album he was just like, like he went from having like a salary job, you know, not touring at all. Like, it, you know, kind of took a big risk on him. Because like yeah, there was a yeah. bunch of vocalists I could have chose that were already in bands. And there's all difficulty. You guys know, find a member of the difficulties, oh, yeah. you know, experience, yeah, yeah. not experience, too much experience, what they want, what don't want or whatever. Yeah. And so. Like, I think he was just like, oh, trying to fill the shoes. But then I think through this cycle, he's, I think he's gained a lot of confidence and realized, yeah, he is a sick musician. Like, you know, That's awesome. and so. Yeah. And he plays guitar as well. Yeah. That was something when we, uh, you know, cause we tracked our EP with Mark. Mark was like, yeah, Kyle's got a lot of good melodic. I like he plays yeah. guitar. So he's got a lot of good melodic. I, you know, he's, he hears melody and he's good at writing over it, singing parts. And, yeah. Yeah. That's what kind of made me interested because the reason I found out about him is because he asked me to do a guest solo, you know, do guest solos for bands and did a guest solo for his band, Archaeologists, and it's such a sick song. It's called Winter's Wake, and, like, the vocals were insane. I just never forgot that. And then years later when I was looking for a vocalist, you know, I hit him up. And, like, like for me, it, like, I'm not, like... Uh, it's not like I totally just like write music out of the like goodness of my heart. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things pressuring me. You know what I mean? There's like a lot of things in motion that yeah, like, yeah. I want to keep in motion and stuff. And there's labels waiting for stuff. And like all the people we work with and the band and all the people. I feel it. Man. The yeah. deadlines. It's, it's not like nothing, you know, it's not like. Oh, I feel it. Yeah. Yeah, trust me. But, he, but he, he was doing it out like straight up making many EPs and many albums just because that's what he loves to do. And he was working a job at the same time. So he has like this massive yeah. discography. Mm-hmm. Like nothing stops him from making music and no matter the situation. So there's like a real genuine yeah. love for creating. And that was like, that's huge. was really awesome. I'm sure that was refreshing. I was, I mean, for me, I was just like, you know, I don't know, you know, you're the guy running the band and you're, you're taking risks on people, you know, you're like, hope this pans out, you know? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, luckily, yeah. man, he's, for sure. he's an amazing musician. Yeah. 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 And you don't want to put some dude on vocals in your band and then like have him quit. Yeah. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah, it's, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. it's fucking well, it happens though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the vocalist is like at the forefront of the band. That's so how it's I feel. it's yeah. hard to change the the who a lot of people perceive as being the face of the band. That's a fucking really hard position to be put in. Yeah. And it's you know, a lot of people don't come out of that, but I feel like you've really done it well. Like you've picked good vocalists for your band. Just did what we could, you know. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah, well, I've, I've learned to value the vocalist a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. You know, Me too. I, I came from the guitar world. And yeah, like, yeah. Totally. Fucking, you could just scream over all this fucking music I put together, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. but now I'm like, okay, no, we have to like, it, it, it's, it's the vocal point straight up. It that is, was, yeah. dude, I have to argue with Kyle. I'm saying like, no, no, like. I know you, because sometimes he'll be pushing me to do crazier stuff. Like, no, you're the vocal point. Like, we, yeah, yeah. you haven't done enough stuff in the song. So you, like, you're the people that, this is what people want, you know, even though I'm the guitar nerd, I clearly want to hear more shredding, but you know. Be, Wait, so he's pushing for crazier guitar parts? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so much the opposite. Like, Naveen yeah. will write a riff sometimes, and I'm just like, dude, 
We gotta like make yeah. this a, a riff. But that sometimes, I can do sometimes a I'm the one who's like, we gotta dumb it down. That's true. That's true. Because sometimes, sometimes you're like, I'll oh, make it crazy. Or yeah. like, whatever. I'm like, that is true. So I think we both have a good awareness of that like vocal thing. That's what I like learned uh, when I did the White Chapel album. Mm-hmm. Mark, and that was my first time working with Mark. Oh, really? All right. Yeah, and uh, you know, like anything I did, he'd be like, let's hear it up against the vocals real quick because they already had the vocals retract. Yeah, that makes and sense. I was like. Wow, that's smart. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because yeah, yeah. us, we're just like crazy as possible, and then figure out the vocals later. You know, and it, like yeah. that totally just changed my whole like paradigm. I was like, okay, vocals, it's not an afterthought, dude. It actually matters. Yeah. Dude, and, and you know, also it's kind of a side note. It also helped me with performing, and even if it's not real, like I'll just be up there, and even if I have the most like 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 booty clenching, like scariest solo <laughs> coming up or whatever, I'm be like. And everybody's just watching the vocalist. Who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, and I'm sure there's like 20 nerds in the front. Like, is he gonna make? Yeah, it? I can yeah, assure yeah. you that people are watching you, Scott. No, 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 no. no. They're <laughs> watching the vocalist. Watching Don't you, fuck up my illusion. <laughs> for me, for me, I'm actually looking in the crowd, the and they're all watching the vocalist. <laughs> that's what I think. Yeah, at least right. that's what I tell myself. And I'm like, fine. Yeah. And then I play better because I don't think anybody's watching me. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, so so when you were because Alex never sang, right? Uh, he sang on like in the studio but never really live you know what i mean okay. it wasn't really like his There's like skill some backups or something yeah where kyle is he is a, vo- a singing vocalist first who had to learn how to do he learned how to do screams for the last album basically no way i'm like you're decent on that song we did when your vocals are great and he's like so we spent like four or five months of him learning and even got like lessons from some homies and stuff was, well, that's fucking crazy yeah, i had yeah. no idea that that's what happened i didn't even know, like he knew how to do <clears throat> Fry screams naturally, and then uh, what's the other one? There's like false chord. Yeah, that one, mm-hmm. that one. And we realized, like, I didn't even realize, you know, going from Anthony, I'm like, well, why don't you like this? You know, like, you know, I'm like, oh, I guess we're missing this thing called false chord vocals. I like learned about it, and then okay. did that oh, yeah. on a couple songs, and I was like, people enjoy it. I'm like, okay, I get you want the little bit of the, <clears throat> the cannibal corpse kind of sound. Yeah, you like know? the the louder, more projected. It's yeah, a, lo- yeah. a lot of hardcore bands do that as yeah. well. So you had to like learn how to do that for the record. I'm like, well, we gotta have those, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so when you were, when you, when uh, Alex left the band, were you looking for someone who could sing? Because I know that there were parts like Tori, which is crazy to go way back. Like it's crazy. It was crazy to me when you guys put out Dreamless and Tori was on that song because I've known Tori since like 2011 oh, really? because Matt Garstka introduced me to Tori. Oh, no way. Like way back what in the day. Trip. So when world. she was on one of your guys' song, I was like, holy shit. Oh, all right. Tori's like, you know, doing Everywhere. her thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah she's awesome. She's so, a good vocalist. yeah, dude, she's amazing. She was on the last one too. So, right, that was right. Cool. Uh, and she, dude, she does like, she's been on American Horror Story yeah. songs and Tori is fucking incredible. Yeah, and her husband is a pretty awesome composer as well composes music for like shows and tv shows so they're both kind of like in the same world or whatever yeah know? that's amazing yeah, it's amazing cool i believe you know it's funny he has the same name as our manager so oh, yeah. anytime i see her post about him i'm like wait steve davis was with you wait a second <laughs> but then i realize it's her husband you know uh but going back i know that you you had singing on records so yeah. was that important to you in looking for a vocalist that you're going to uh, find someone who could sing I think at that time I was just looking for somebody who was willing to go on the road and like to ride or die with me kind of guy. Cause I didn't yeah. want somebody to quit on the next record, which I ended up having anyway, but you know, yeah, fuck yeah. it. You know? yeah. <laughs> but you know, cause there was a guy that was, and this actually led to someone else quitting, but we like came to an ultimatum where we had this guy who could sing and scream, but like, you know, I'd ask for a demo and he'd send it back like four weeks later, like super polished. I'm like, I don't think you're the one. Like, yeah, I, think you're, yeah, this yeah. Is, I think this is all fake. You know what I mean? And then I had somebody who was like uh, someone I knew wanted to do this really bad. And I knew would ride through, you know, that's another thing is like you'll get some someone to join the band. And the moment you don't have like one sick tour, they're like, I don't know if this is for me. You're like, bro, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some of the tours are not as good as the other ones, you know, like, yeah, like yeah. Yep. trying to find somebody with like a realistic mindset. So I think that was I was that was more important to me. Someone I could work with creatively and then. It'd be a plus if they were like good at singing because I always thought that'd be cool to expand the band, like to have someone like Kyle, you know what I mean? And yeah. So it'd be nice, but I was more so we had our festivals in Europe are still booked and we had tours already still booked. But I was just looking at it from like, okay, who's going to be able to do the, the job or whatever and help me work on this next record and be involved and not like quit because they have a dog or something. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. And move to Nashville. Or, with or, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. Dude. 
yeah. So that's pretty sick that you yeah. all moved out here together. That's Feel like, pretty uh, privileged for sure. And, yeah. and that's another thing that inspires me is like, man, make a great, great record. He's got these people here. You know? yeah. yeah. It's really sick, mm-hmm. man. I love it all. But hey, if we're going to, we've been like going for a while. If we're going to take questions, we ought to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. There are a couple of questions, Harrison. You want to, do you have the, the two Discord ones? Yeah. None of the tacos or burritos questions. Let's not ask those. What the those hell ones. does that mean? <laughs> this is just some like copper qu- crab lore. <laughs> yeah, just questions that are pineapple on your pizza, yes or no, kind of a question. Oh, I see, I see. All we right, want uh, the real hard hitting. It's the real shit. All right. Go okay, ahead. So when you said brain drill wasn't as good, what did you what did you mean by that? No, I'm <laughs> 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 like go into that. <laughs> Wait, what did I say? Take me back. <laughs> 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 Uh, referencing our dankest moment <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure we'll cut that as a clip and <laughs> yeah. dude uh before we go into this i cut we cut a clip a few weeks ago and it was me saying that we we took it a little bit out of context and it was me talking about triggers right okay okay we cut out all the like nuance, the nuance of what she said she was like for certain bands it's like they're way heavier if they have triggers and i was like let's oh. just cut all that out and just make it every band's heavier with triggers and, and it, it went super dude viral. it's like our only <laughs> podcast yeah. clip that has like over 100k super views super viral on youtube on instagram no it's on instagram oh. so now we're only cutting clips like that so yeah uh, see, scott scott when yeah, you yeah. see a crazy clip of yourself just saying something way I off the fucking care. you can yeah. post anything you want <laughs> It'll, i'll take any uh <laughs> smoke or whatever from any band i don't care yeah, yeah, let's go, go perfect all right, hit the question. We'll talk shit on right, anyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're for sure cutting out that Rings of Saturn part from really. <laughs> I was thinking of making a clip of how I said that fetus smashed faceless. Oh. It'd be funny. <laughs> they probably <laughs> did. <laughs> they got smashed <laughs> straight up. Yeah, you heard it, I Evan. Told them to their face, and they played <laughs> perfectly. There's nothing they could have done. Better. Oh, I told them right uh, when they were loading out. I was like, "Dude, you guys just got completely <laughs> fucked over, dude." Yeah, we trying to load his stuff. You're just on the side, like, bro. God, you guys <laughs> fucking <laughs> shouldn't even showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I'm gonna go start a band now. Actually, yeah, I wasn't even not in a band because at the time. of you. Definitely not because of yeah. you. We'll take Evan though. That's yeah, <laughs> we'll take that guy. All right, go ahead. Uh, Pirate Sleeve asks, "What's the worst show you've played?" Oh, we've already That's talked about this. That's to you, Scott. Oh, me? Um, hmm. I guess there's different kinds of worst. Like, there's like, is the venue the worst? Or did, were you the worst, I guess? You know, that I play really bad or something like that? No, it's uh, just all around worst. Most embarrassing show of your life. Oh, embarrassing yeah, show? Yeah. 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 I haven't been too embarrassed. You know? He rips it every time, doesn't he? Yeah, Scott Carson. I've definitely been kind of embarrassed. there with the ramble, dude. Sometimes. Just, Let me think. These are always the worst question when you were on tour. Like, tell us a tour story. I know. I'm like, like, I, I can't going think to a gas station. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm like, nothing. Nothing comes to yeah, mind, what? actually. Uh, I don't know. The worst show? Bruh. I have a couple standout shows. You want to hear the worst show we ever played? Yeah, maybe yeah. it'll inspire a story. Yeah, okay, yeah. Go so for it. we got booked at this hardcore show. I think Lionheart was no, the we were gonna. We had okay, a show. Mm-hmm. And then our show got... They were worried that no one was going to come. Mm-hmm. So they were like, oh, just put Entheos on this hardcore fest. The Lionheart okay, show. Okay. In Sacramento. Okay, that would be super your crowd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was yeah. super And it was like crowd. when we first started. Oh, so cool. like, A, nobody knew about us already. No. And then B, we're like some nerdy, we're, like weird, proggy, death metal tech thing. And like everyone just literally st- stood in the back of the venue and didn't even like try to peep it. We wow, sold wow. one. We sold one t-shirt. Yeah, one shirt. They're all just like looking over. Like oh, <laughs> it, was dude, it was so fucked. awkward. It was oh, wow. fucked. Okay, okay. It was awkward. All right. So yeah. I, okay, I, can, I get the vibe. Sucked. It's not a show that you have fun at. You're looking yeah. for no, no, a no, no, show. No. Okay, I can the think of one. The worst show of your life. Because I've had some like shows where I'm like, where are we playing? This is crazy. This is sad. You know, yeah, yeah. I should be <laughs> but at sometimes home. Sometimes those shows right are now. sick. Like, yeah, it's like, well, I'm, we I wish I really p- got that degree. Cannot let the parents or the wife or anyone find out about this. No this pictures. Yeah, yeah. We have no... <laughs> No Twitch. Yeah, you call home. You're like tonight. It was <laughs> it was sick. Actually, we ripped it. Living my dream out here. Definitely baby. glad I didn't go to college. And, yeah. No, I can think of one. I remember one. Um, uh, it just came to me as you guys were talking about it about people just not caring that you're there. Uh, uh, we played um, Switzerland for the very first time at this place called uh, Rao or something. Which oh, wait, normally I, it's a great Kiff. Yeah, Kiff, yeah. which is awesome. But oh, I think, great yeah, catering. Yeah. And maybe they've changed as a people then, but I think when we went uh, back in 2000 been 13 or 14 it was way back when i just 
you know, I was excited to be in Europe or whatever. And then I didn't like, you're American, you know, like don't realize that each country has their own style. I didn't even, yeah, couldn't yeah. even comprehend that. Like French are just going wild. The Italians yeah, are going yeah. wild. Oh, and yeah, then the, the Germans are not really going wild or whatever. Yeah. And then I no, was they're kind of hit or miss. Yeah, hit or miss with the Germans. Germans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude, we, what was the place we just played where they went off? Yeah. It was the first Mission? show of the tour. Oberhausen. Mm. That was it. I think. Yeah, it's usually the first day of tour. It was the first day of tour. It was the sickest show. It's, it's where like, the bald guy with the earrings, he does all the catering. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Yep. Makes you fill out the form and shit. That's it. Yeah. Dude, it cool ripped. Spot. Yeah, it was yeah. amazing. It was like people were and going it was the day of our, nuts. It was that the day the of our album release. So we we're like, yeah. Oh, we're yeah. Yeah, we're like, this is insane. Yeah. I think remember um, uh, Robert said something like, I I performed for the Germans and they were impressed. I can't, what the fuck was his post that he made? It was like the best post ever. I was like, oh shit, Robert's having fun in Europe. Bro. He's like, I did a dab. And he said the Germans were impressed by my skills. Oh yeah. <laughs> Something yeah, yeah. hilarious. But yeah, it sounded like a fun time. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was Switzerland and I, I just, I like, I couldn't, I felt like nobody cared that we were there and nobody was paying attention. And then like insult to injury, like there was a, people were just playing on their phones, like directly. Uh, in front yeah, of yeah, yeah. And then that venue was like, sorry, we can't go above a hundred DB. And then uh, we yep. didn't have our own sound guy. So yep. the guy had us at like 85 DB. He's like, just oh, in case, you know, no. <laughs> and I'm like, this is sucks, dude. And I know. And I remember wanting to like put, I th like put my phone, uh, foot on his phone. It's like, bro, you're in the front row in front of me on your phone right now. This is so annoying. Bro, that they can't even comprehend why that would be annoying. And yeah, that's so literally remember. my biggest pet peeve is when people are in the front row on, the on front. their phone. Why are you in the front? I've, well, I, why are you I've in the front? Said, I put my I've foot gotten on their off phone. of my microphone and been like, get the fuck off your, like, lip mouthed it to the person. Oh, come on, dude. Yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah, get yeah, the fuck dude, off your phone in the front row or go back. Like, yeah, dude, I'm, I totally, like, I, I'll kick your beer off of there or your jacket <laughs> off of there. Like, this is not your little desk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is weird. You're just killing the vibe or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've played, uh, I can't remember what, I think it was our last. It was one of the tours that we played recently, mm -hmm. but a guy was just in the front just with a huge hoagie. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> Sitting on the stage. I'm like, why are you <laughs> eating a hoagie in the front sure. row? Bro, Get let the me see fuck that, out of oh here, dude. God. Give me yeah. your fucking hoagie. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> like, oh my God. what the fuck is this? Why are oh, you yeah, eating yeah. a huge hoagie in the front <laughs> row? Yeah, it happens. Though Pe I did. People talking to, I don't like Oh, uh, dude, people. Uh, like, what are you standing in front having a conversation? I, yeah. Uh, yeah. last Rivers tour someone was directly in front of us having conversation between the songs was like you should fucking leave Dude, they were blown away you. that I could speak you know yeah yeah you're <laughs> a human this you're not players? I know there's they forget talks. that there's humans like, on stage yeah yeah like yo I yeah. see you dude like, <laughs> yeah this isn't TV <laughs> yeah, yeah, like we yeah. aren't just, like you know theater, yeah. yeah are they Whoa. think you're one of those English guys with the furry hats the guards <laughs> yeah. oh yeah 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 I'm just gonna perform it's like I'm not a fucking guard dude yeah I know dude yes yeah yeah, that's fun. <laughs> yep. Uh, next question, Harrison. Yeah. So Europe. <laughs> We're going with Europe. <laughs> so yeah. Europe. Were, well, ours was in Sacramento, so. Yeah, yeah. California. No, but I get it, dude. Sometimes you get like a cold Europe crowd. And that's it's like, true. dude, this Why are we here? sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially, well. And we just traveled like how far to be? I don't even know. If you're the opener with a cold European crowd. That's what it was. I mean, we were the opener on that. And it's, it's cold rough. in the venue, too. And it's cold in the venue. It's like, this sucks. Hasn't even Terrible. warmed up in there. <laughs> well, I was going to say actually about the person eating and, you know, the hoagie guy. So I do have a video <laughs> of a man eating a Snickers bar in a, during a psychroptic set. Uh, uh, and, right. you know, I, I was kind of down with <laughs> that guy. It was just, he was bobbing his head. And I have a video off. of a guy. Uh, it was in Spain. Which is like the crowds are pretty crazy there. Yeah, they're usually fun. Okay, so I have a video of when Archfire was playing. He was he was I was video like I zoomed in on his face because he was just like, oh my god, <laughs> like it was that's the worst. It was like amazing how still yeah, he was. I remember this, and I, and I was showing it to Dean afterwards, dude. I was Psychopath. like, dude, the crowd was going wild for you guys. Look at this guy, because. <laughs> We had this thing where he we would like razz each other, you know. Like he would send Dean. me, he would find like every negative comment that was oh, yeah, about yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. people really digging the new record. <laughs> or he'd be like, he sent me this one that was like, uh, it was a review of the show, and like they didn't mention us. Oh. And he came up and read it to me, and he was like, "Funny, they didn't mention that you guys were on the show." <laughs> Very deep. Yeah, yeah, it was it was fucking deep. hilarious, That's dude. Weird. 
We, um, <laughs> I, I miss touring with them. Uh, yeah, they're good. I miss those guys a lot. <laughs> I think the bad thing about the hoagie guy was he was using the stage as his plate. Yeah, yeah no. I know. I like, remember dude, that. Kick the shit so out. So it was on Whitechapel? Uh, no, it was the Rebo tour. You know what would have made really? that scenario funny? Is if he had a jar of mayonnaise and like a jar of pickles oh. and he was just making the sandwich yeah, on stage. Yeah, That's what would have made it funny and what would have made me respect that man. Fucking hoagie guy, dude. Don't come with a fucking fully made hoagie to this the is front not, row. It's not your show, bro. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm would not, you, a, and I'm not a Subway server, dude. Would you do that? Would you <laughs> go up and watch a man and eat a hoagie? I no, don't, I don't eat guy. at shows at all because I don't want to have bad breath. Yeah. So are you, are you he didn't with care. Breath? This guy I'm definitely concerned with Dude, breath at shows. I'm That's so funny. Concerned. Let's talk about that. That's I, like a big concern for me. A lot of people are not so concerned much with that. Gum that it would make your fucking head spin and cough sense. drops. Well, you're out there talking to fans. Yeah, and I, I, I'm same thing. And dude. Oh my god! I've smelled some of the worst breath in my uh, life. Guys. Oh yeah, I'm 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 being taken back to. You're shorter, so they're, you're. It's oh dude, funny. they're all breathing. No, and people are at merch. They're like this, they're and, you're fa- and you're like, dude. You're yeah, and they're like, in they're, my they'll be in face, my face man. and like spitting. Like I'm getting the weather in my face, like oh. the rain and. <laughs> dude, yeah, it's, it's all on the way down. Too. Yeah, man, yeah, it's yeah. awful. Just COVID. So we also have Shannon keep. Well, Shannon you know, did this on her own accord. She has a jar of gum at merch as oh, well. That's a good idea. So if I you ever need gum, gum? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. No reason. Gum hey dude, uh, I think, you know, this tastes good. Try it out. Free gum for everybody, especially <laughs> yeah, you. <exactly. laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm actually being taken back to a person's breath that I experienced <laughs> on this last tour. <laughs> so I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's real though. I, I think humans, like, uh, actually humans, they're, they have, their deepest memory is with scent. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I remember those breath moments. Like sometimes <laughs> you smell something and you're like, whoa, it like totally brings you back somewhere. That's, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm right back to that Might breath be Shinfo, I breathed. Might be total shit. But. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Oh, wait, wait, another one. Was that it? Was that the no. Only no. Uh, Two questions. <laughs> okay. What was the question? <laughs> What's the worst breath you ever smelled at a show? <laughs> yeah, well, like there's them. a lot, young young uh, grasshopper. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, like more <laughs> says. Uh, so I was challenged to find a perfect album by a podcast that takes uh, talks about an album a week, and Dreamless is one of my picks. Uh, oh. Could I get a rundown of some of the concepts in the record? Oh, cool. Glad you like it. Um, that I mean. That one had a, a big influence through movies. You know, I really liked uh, Interstellar and Enter the Void and um, uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and yeah, Interstellar. Like the intro of Lacuna. If you listen to the Lacuna, the intro motif and one of the motifs in the song is the theme song for Interstellar. And uh, like abandoned, the lyrics are all about that. The song "The Void Alone" was inspired by the movie. Or the Void Alone. Sorry, that's the song I was talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Dreamless. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah. But that song and concept was inspired by the movie "Enter the Void." You ever watch "Enter the Void"? Gaspar Absolutely. Noel. Man, I trippiest movie of all time. It was for me. It was like I smoked a big old joint and I was like, "Let's find a cool movie to watch tonight." And I was alone and I put that on. That sounds cool. And then by the end of it, I was like, "Good God!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, that existential was- crisis. <laughs> Should not have smoked weed before that. <laughs> totally. Like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was a, so. It's a lot of uh, as far as the concepts lyrically, it's like kind of movies and atmospheric, and and even the uh, and Blade Runner too. And in fact, the the synth that we used was the same synth that Vangelis used for the Blade Runner. So we were trying to like incorporate that. But yeah, a lot of stuff like that. Hopefully, that answers your question. Musically, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Musically, it was just kind of pushing further on what I did on the album before because it kind of wrote both albums in the same span. It was like Flesh Prevails was the last album on Unique Leader Record and the moment we released that Nuclear Blast expressed interest but they said you need to give us another record so I just was like (coughs) one it felt like one session to me. So So do you have a say in lyrics as well or Uh, are they written by each uh, vocalist? It, kind of each vocalist, I would say. I think I was more involved in Undying Light and the last one more conceptually, just kind of help along the new guy coming in, you know, <coughs> just get the aesthetic right or whatever. But, you know, mostly the singers. And then now the, the new one, it's like all Kyle, you know. Sick. And I prefer that way. I want to yeah, yeah. be working on the music, you know. I'll, like, I'll, I'll get all trippy with you and talk about concepts, you know, and we'll, like, you know, hang out. Like, what if it was like that? But that's about it, you know. Like, you, huh. do, the, you do the writing, you know. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, it's a fucked up part of the process, <laughs> yeah, yeah. too. But it's cool. It could really change the song, you know. If Absolutely. It's some 
lyrically it brings it to life to. yeah it brings it, totally it to life does. yeah yeah it brings it to life that's what takes i mean vocal patterns i can do those i could do an entire album in like a couple of days sure but sure. when it comes to lyrics give me a month or two yeah that makes a sense. year yeah. or a life yeah, or a year or my entire life i would i <clears throat> if I didn't have to finish, if I wasn't on deadlines, then I could just go on forever and ever. Yeah, it's kind of like, all right, Cheney, we got we to wrap yeah. it up. It's like <laughs> time to, to track. Have to get it done. Are you the rapper upper? <laughs> uh, no, we're both the Try. procrastinator. You're, oh, so you're Try. both procrastinators. Yeah. You know I'm what? pretty good with the music, though. I can, I, no, I can Nav- crank it out. Yeah. Naveen gets shit done very fast. If but you're Nav- like, I need an album next week, like, all right, I, I could it's gonna be crazy make week. something happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to be weird. Let's but do it. One of the <laughs> yeah. things, one of the reasons why it's good for us to, now we track with Mark, you know, on the EP that we just did, it's the first time we've ever actually tracked yeah. vocals with anyone else. And wow. so our, what I would say our flaw together is that Naveen will let me track whenever I want. So Naveen's not forcing me to, he's not like forcing me into yeah. a deadline. Sure. So it could go on forever and ever. Yeah. 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 It's uh, good to have someone who's like, we have to do this. Like yeah. we're on it's, the clock. It's here. really good for us to have a third party. Mark, yeah. Mark has helped bring a lot of aspects of our band together. You yeah. know, we sat down with all in the demoing process. We had Mark and Evan oh, both with us to be like, all right, let's they cut come that over riff out. Yeah, yeah. Let's cut this out. And, you know, just having Mark there when I'm tracking, because sometimes I'll make vocal parts that are way too fucking complicated <clears throat> yeah. yeah, or yeah. that aren't complicated enough. And Mark will be like, you know, I heard, I kind of heard more of this going on mm-hmm. there. So let's, so he's helped a lot in the, the whole process, but in, yeah. in giving me a deadline, it's yeah, definitely makes sense. Been a thing. Yeah. You don't want to fucking hire these people. You don't want to be late to that. That's that, that's yeah. how I feel too. Like I got this like deadline with the, the mix and it's like, it's a new person too. It's not like Mark. I can't show up and be like, eh, I didn't finish. You know, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like I have to be finished, but yeah, Mark's amazing. Like yeah, yeah. he wrote like a bunch of vocal patterns on our last album. He just like heard it and he's, he's like, super good at that stuff. Oh, yes. I don't know about that, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. like, all right, let's do Dude, it. Dude, He brought so many vocal, uh, like new timbres out of me, you know, <clears throat> oh, like cool. he, he would yeah, hear yeah. something that I would be like, let's fucking cut that because it's not necessarily like, you know, I'm a very, um, when it comes to vocals, I like like really, uh, what's a good way to put it? Like, I like stuff that's super dialed in. So yeah, it, when it comes polished. to me, I'm trying to, like my vocals are, 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 it's just like as far as the tonality. You want everything to be full as fuck. Just fully polished. Sure. Like I'm doing a low, I'm doing a high. It's I'm like Chaney has all of her like techniques kind of like super dialed in yes yeah whereas mark kind of wanted to hear her like just do like a yell here and there right yeah you know what I mean? more natural kind yeah of, exactly yeah. More motion in it yeah 100 yeah. less, less uh, technique i guess 100 yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. so That's, there yeah. are parts on our new stuff that it's like not super techniquey but it's a new voice for me like and it's screaming and now when i'm techniquey, hearing it i'm like, like yeah. techniquey 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Technique. yeah 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 so, so I will like go back and listen to it. And I'm like, dude, this is like making the hairs on my arms stand up yeah, in a way cool. that I, my vocals haven't done that for me, you know, cause I'm just hearing new shit out of myself. So he really was able to pull stuff like that out of me. Yeah, I enjoyed that. That's sick. It's like, you're not like in your room and just kind of like, all right, next lyric, next lyric. Yeah. It's like exactly. someone being like, yo, sound pissed off. You don't sound pissed <laughs> off. Exactly. Enough. Get angry. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah he's you, like, do you, like kind of getting all casual. He's again. always aware exactly. of the vibe. Yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. cool. Like, yeah. So I sound pissed off enough. It just kind of sounds like you did it. You know? Yeah. I yeah. totally get yeah, yeah. that. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Dude, there totally. are parts that I was like, dude, I just ne- like, as far as technique goes, that's perfect. And he's like, nah, I want to hear this be a little more Tom Araya type shit. Yeah. 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 It's like for me and you're probably the same way. It's like when you're used to doing guitar and drums and stuff, it's like you either like did it right or didn't do it right. Yeah. You know? True. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of for vocals. It's more of like a vibe. Right. And that's how it brings it to life. Right. You got the fucking machine and then on top of this fucking human driving it, you know, like this, you know, that's what I always said. It's Mm -hmm. like the vocalist job is to take the music and like relay it to everyone else. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, like translate the, guy, the, like music. the fucking yeah, like the in between the you know? ayahuasca fucking priest or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of how I've always translated to you. Yeah, like I, I don't, I don't really like instrumental music. I, li- I'm like into vocals, you know, for sure. Yeah, same. So yeah, I yeah. always liked having sick vocals. Yeah, it just kind of feels like uh, wankery if there's no yeah, vocals yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not like, telling a story. We're just there's definitely a few other. albums I'm down for that are instrumental, but for the most part, like I always want to hear vocals. Mm. Same. Yeah, I can't think of many. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah, not, not much. 
Yeah, like Ron Jarson Jazz Beck fusion. Yeah, it'd Lonson. be like a fusion Alan jazz Holdsworth. record. Yeah, like that kind of yeah, stuff yeah. for sure. Stuff for, well, in those albums where there's an absence of vocals, there's always another voice. True. Yeah, something there is else. a lead. It's like the guitar player is yeah. the exactly. lead or whatever, saxophone mm-hmm. player or whatever. Yeah. 100%. True. Sick. Yeah. So that, hope that answers this question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it was. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask. Someone in the chat brought up animals as leaders. And of course, the first, like the first animals, dude. Oh, that was crazy. Super <laughs> awesome. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Insane. I can't believe I know you. I remember texting Tosin that. I was like, oh, dude, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. believe I know you. This came out so good. Yeah, yeah like this is insane. Yeah, it was good shit. All right, uh, yeah, next up, Burning the Hive says, uh, first of all, big fan of Fallujah, uh, the Harvest Wounds. Yo, thanks, Burning Hive. pretty regular in my rotation. Let's go with the OG album, too. Uh, question. <laughs> uh, the track Fidelio features a sample from the film Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. Do you happen to know uh, what about the film encouraged the making of this track? General Kubrick fan? Uh, into the symbolicism of the film? Um, I mean, you know, I was more into the music, so I guess I could just speculate why. It was just one of our favorite movies. Like, I mean, I was obsessed with Kubrick, like The Shining and all that stuff. So just felt felt right with, like, impactful movie vibes, I'd say. Not to simplify it, but, you know, it's like, yeah. That's such a sick movie. That's one of my favorite movies ever. Sam, do you like Batushka? Is that the one he did where it's like the all it's kind of like a period piece? No, it's like a black metal. It's band. a black metal. Band. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, because that's the one Kubrick film I saw, so I have no fucking. Their music kind of sounds. Did not see. Do you know? You know uh, the eyes wide shut scene, like the scene where he's all in the group and for sure, and they hit the fucking. Yeah, so Batushka no, no, reminds no. me of that. Oh, song. yeah, kind of sounds like that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, I always thought that'd be a great sample for a band to walk up onto. You know, uh, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the weird reverse chant thing they do. In yeah, the thing. And, and also, oh, idea. Dude, all the lore around that movie is so sick. It's like the last movie he did before he died. And it's like basically saying like, hey, yeah, elites like fucking murder each other, you know, for fun. Just so you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and then everybody Peace. back then is like, no way. Dude. Yeah, and then yeah. Epstein Island are like, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they do do that, actually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why do you die then? <laughs> like, you know, like, why do you like die like right after they turn that in? Probably just died because he's crazy and alcoholic or something, but. I don't know that much about it. I mean, have you seen that movie? Uh, what is it? Room three. Uh, two, three, eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty shining. trippy. A lot of that stuff is stretching, but a lot of it's like, Dude, oh, those are so details I never even realized. I know? agree. So we have a friend who's super into conspiracies, and he's like, "You got to watch this movie. Yeah, 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 Kubrick yeah, yeah. filmed the moon landing, and some of the shit is like." You see this wood right here yeah, in the yeah, yeah, back yeah. of the scene. This was made in Germany in 1912. Yeah, and that yeah. signifies Clearly that it's the like, Holocaust. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I oh, think okay. we're reaching. But there, but there is some really cool stuff that I didn't realize from then. I watched that movie, like how the whole building is like doesn't make sense. Like when they walk around, like when they walk around through the hallways where the windows are, don't make sense. Like if you map it out, like it actually they must have built a weird set where the windows don't make sense and. Which movie? And uh, uh, Shining? The Shining. The Shining. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. all sorts of weird stuff. And then he, like there is footage of Kubrick going in and being really meticulous with what's in the background and stuff. So he clearly cared about what you saw in the background. But yeah, he's a oh, fucking sure he good, he's a, a great stuff. director. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he's so sick. Of course. If and you, then he did yeah. things to mess with you. Like he changed, like the carpet in front of the boy being like a different, he'd moved him so the, the, the pattern would change in front of you. So kind of giving you this uneasy vibe, you know, like, like things are changing without you realizing it. Uh, yeah, he was absolutely brilliant. Oh, That's so for sick. sure. I haven't seen that movie. Did he while. film the moon landing? It. Hey, I'm 50 50 on it. I don't know. I have no idea. I have, I have look, no fucking idea. I'd have idea. to look further into that. <laughs> I don't know. Could, too busy I could making be. music. Yeah, it could be. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, too Fuck. busy working on this new Fallujah yeah, record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone else figured out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know. In the, let in us know the in the comments. comments. Let us know in the comments. Like and subscribe. Yeah. All right, Harrison, any other questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, Rob McCambridge asks, if you could sell any type of band merch, no matter how wild, what would it be? He's asking any Either type of any band type merch? Of ba- okay, yeah, okay, like, okay. doesn't just have to be shirts. A, a piece of the AR-15 moon. with my logo on it. There we go. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, that'd be dope. With the gleaming? Gleam. <laughs> Fallujah, just because like, or like a, like, what was, what did they use? The Glayar 15. What do you think Al-Qaeda used in <laughs> like Gleam Fallujah? The like, the Taliban. AK-47. That's like the Didn't Taliban they use the, gun. the Russian guns, though? There was also those old school Russian. I can't remember what they're called. But. I don't know. There's the, uh, well, I just know from Call of Duty. You know, there's like the Scorpion. And then there's oh, the, yeah. uh, 
Has anyone ever come after you for the name Fallujah? Oh, or yeah, I've had anyone? so many. I've had like a Marine that was like gritting his teeth angry at me and then cried after we talked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shit. Like, oh, shit. Like, he wanted uh, to hit me at first and then he was like, okay. Yeah, he was down yeah. after. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I've had many, many people. <laughs> you know what's weird with band names? I don't think of what the band name Same. is. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I mean, that, okay. dude, dying fetus. Dying cool. that's what it fetus. Is. Yeah. Oh, that's the yeah. best, dude. Cannibal corpse. <laughs> I like, I don't... That. That's what I tell people when they ask what band I'm in. I say dying fetus. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were in Australia for the last tour, and, like, I was getting drunk on the plane on wine and stuff, so I was loud, and, and we finally landed in Australia, and some guy, like, five seats away, he's like, oh, hey, mate, I, I just have to ask, what band are you in? I'm like, oh, we're dying fetus, bro. <laughs> and the, whole, was he the, like, whole, the whole plane went quiet. And, I, and he's like, he said, what? And I said, dying fetus, like a baby, you know, like a dying <laughs> Like a baby. dead, dead <laughs> baby. <laughs> dying fetus. Like if I, I maybe don't understand. You know? I love that. And the whole band was like, bro, stop. stop <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, he's not going to be a fan. You know, he's not going to go look us up. And be, yeah. we yeah, lost yeah. one, dude. And <laughs> so... That's the one. That's a go-to one. And it was funny because I was like, "He's oh yeah, yeah, we're playing shows with cattle decapitation. It's gonna be rad." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like you lied about. He's like, "You told the truth about everything except for one detail." I was like, "It's way more fun." I know. I love it. <laughs> I think I should start doing that actually. Yeah, it's like, are we really missing out? On I come that? across bands that are, well, names that are actually worse than Dying Fetus uh, when I'm scouring. Anal cunt was yeah, always one. one for me, though. I'm like, damn, I, that's not one I could tell my grandma. Severed sure. Savior is a good one. Severed Savior is ever. Fecal Dude. Filiac. But the, the thing <laughs> is, though, yeah. that when it comes to like saying these band names, it's totally nonchalant. I don't even think of it. Me. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Even think of what it I, means. I, it's... The words are not associated with the oh, no. thing. It's words decrepit that birth. sound cool. Yeah. Decrepit birth. I think of like psychedelic adventures. Like Same. Yeah. I don't think of like... A, I'm <laughs> thinking in Time Begins, the dude with the fucking sick screen name in oh, our yeah. chat right oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, oh, yeah. That's my dude. What's up, Anti Time Begins? I mean, dude, one of the best records. Oh, yeah. Decrepit. Game, game changer. We haven't I even talked about how sick Decrepit is really oh, in this so podcast. Good. That was a big one for me. Diminishing, diminishing Between Worlds is one, that was the one I got into. But yeah, and then oh, I yeah. went back to Anti Time Begins. It's so yeah. sick. And that was Tim Young on drums. Yeah, right? super yeah. sick, man. Baller. Yeah. I was actually, uh, I'm just going to tell this story. This is one of my classic stories. Nope. Uh, <laughs> me and my friends. So, Flesh Rot, before I, I have this, have you heard that? That's like another thing that I made. Flesh Rot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, okay. all about Flesh Rot. Uh, but so, Davey and shit. Yeah, yeah. Insane. Like, before it was that, it was actually like I was trying to make a death metal band with like my friends. Okay. Right. And so we used to jam like every week. And then we would go to Taco Bell. So I had some like just friends from in Santa Cruz and we would jam and we had like a bunch of different songs. Like right, were, it was like more like old school kind of death metal. Okay. And uh, I was wearing an origin shirt and there was this dude in Taco Bell, like a metal guy. And he was like, fuck yeah, origin dude. All right, sick. And I was like, oh sick. You've heard of that band? And we were, dude, we were kids. I was like 16. And he's like, he's like, yeah, actually uh, I'm in this band called Decrepit Birth. Huh. And like it was before they had their album out. Shit. And he was like, "Yeah, we're actually recording up the street because they're from Santa Cruz." Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, Matt and all. And that. I and I was like, "Oh shit, that's sick!" And it was Derek Boyer. Oh no way! Yeah, and he was <laughs> like, "That's insane." Yeah, like I played with Dying Fetus, and I was like, "Holy shit, Excuse are you kidding me?" Because that was like my favorite band. <laughs> I didn't know he played with Dying Fetus. Yeah, he played with them like on a tour or something. Okay. And then uh, that's how I met him. Oh wow! And like that was fucking twenty plus years ago. What a trip! And then uh. So I met him and he was cool and we kind of like exchanged contacts and he actually rolled over to like one of our practices one day, just like oh, hung man. out. And oh, uh, yeah. then I heard like that was before they were record. This is when he was recording bass for, for in time begins. He was on that record. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Right. Yeah. And then uh, fucking the album comes out and I'm just like, dude, this is it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was like my fucking shit. Dude. So that's the kind of, that's metal that I'm into like ultra brutal, like, you know, crazy, dur, 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 but the feels not like, melodic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> non melodic, just like. What a difference! Yeah, yeah. The diminishing between worlds, because like I said, I found diminishing between worlds first. So when I went back to that, I was like, "What the fuck?" It's like a whole other band. Yeah, yeah. And the newest record, Axis Monday. Oh yeah, I'm not as familiar. with Way different. Is it? Yeah, it's just like the first song is kind of like in time begin style. True. Yeah. Yeah, they had some brutal. Yeah, because I played it on a trip. Uh, I just played through it. There was like a big heavy song in the middle somewhere that's super dope. uh, Also sick. Axis Monday is a really sick record. You should check it out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, they used to actually like so all the bands in Santa Cruz used to jam at this like uh, storage unit, and they had one there, and like we would be jamming and like 
it'd be like, dude, the crap is around the corner, man. Yeah. Like a lot of, a lot of death metal was from there. Yeah. yeah. Like was, uh, Odious Mortem. I don't yeah, know if oh, you know. Oh, it's one of my favorites, Odious. dude. They yeah, were like yeah. the little, the, like, they were like members of Severed Savior and, um, I might be wrong, but Decrepit Birth, like that had Joel. In yeah, it. Joel yeah. in the yeah, band. Yeah. And Casey Howard, who yeah, was in uh, Decrepit for a and, while. And there's um, Sons of Aurelius were from mm-hmm. there. And Chase, didn't he live in yeah, Santa yeah. Cruz? Like he Continuum. Still does. And yeah. there's members does. of Sons of Aurelius were in So Continuum yeah, we used to, he was in Flesh Rot when I first started. Oh, really? And we used to jam at his house. And, and like he was with me when I met Derek at that, oh, no way. At that Taco Bell. That's cool. I got to tour with him on that 2014. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was in Decrepit for a while. Yeah. And he was yeah. bringing a dab rig on that. Re- I remember he had it like, in You're his fucking backpack. insane. Was like, yeah. We're going to Canada. <laughs> he's, he's like, dude, you're a nut. He's job. like, it'll be fine. Dude. Yeah. And it was fine. So it's like, fuck me up. It's like, yeah, I was yeah. like, there's these other people that just go around not caring. And it seems like it's Some, I know. But for me, I'm, I'm like caring all the time. Dude, I'm so yeah, paranoid. I guess the weed it hits me in that way. I'm like paranoid as fuck. Okay. I, That's how I am. Just a story about me being paranoid. I got gifted like several ounces of weed That's on sick. the last tour. And I, uh, we were on tour last year with Whitechapel. I got gifted a bunch of weed, right? Great gift. And I ate an edible. And edibles make me so paranoid okay. <laughs> that I took all of this. I took most of my weed and I just dumped it in a gas station <laughs> toilet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I was like, a cop's definitely pulling us over tonight. We're like, fucked. Um, we're, we're fucked. fucked. Yeah. And of course, you didn't get pulled over. Nothing happened. No, yeah, not never. at all. We had Harrison driving us. It was perfect. But yeah, I just get paranoid, man. I def- Always have. I've, uh, I'm the same. I'm always paranoid. But I've definitely accidentally smuggled the shit into Canada so many times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been, been in the merch state, like, go to the merch, what's up? And you're like, hey, man, I found this in the thing. And I was like, what is that? Yep. And it's like, dude, oh, my God. We had that in the van with yeah. us, bro. Yeah. 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 That yeah. happens to us, like, every time. We're like, <laughs> yeah. it's a whole fucking joint. Yeah, We're like, like, dude. Yeah. Right. Dude, and yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't even smoke. So. Yeah, they won't let you in. No. Nope. Yeah. What's up, Canada? <laughs> That's all. All right. Sick. All right. All right. Well, let's I think we should end it there. Podcast. We've been. Yeah. You know what time it is? How long have we been for going a long for? Long ass time. Uh, two oh, hours, it's minutes. almost ten. All right. Yeah. Perfect. That's a great podcast. All right, you guys. Thank you <laughs> so much for tuning in. Thank you to all of the gleamers who tuned in for this podcast. We're gonna kick it over. We do a post show for maybe twenty minutes or so. We'll listen to some music and chat with you guys. But Sweet. if you haven't, if you missed part of the podcast. You can check it out tomorrow. It'll be posted on YouTube and anywhere else the podcast can be found. And also you can come and rewatch this Twitch, of course. Much love, everyone. Have a great week. Uh, we do podcasts every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. We will see you guys come in the post show in about five seconds. Yep. Love y'all. Peace. Have Thank a good you guys. one. Thanks. We can smoke weed now. That's-